All righty, we are live. What is going on, everybody? This is the Xbox Two Podcast, and I am one of your co-hosts, Randall Thor19, the man with the million, the man who has actually released two videos back to back. Like crazy times, huh? When I'm actually releasing oh, wow. videos. Um, but yes, maybe I'll actually finish a game. Oh, well, don't. <laughs> I mean, let's not go there, Jez. I mean, let's not, not say anything you can't take back. Uh, oh, shoot. But as usual, my co host, the managing editor, Windows Central, Jez Corden, who's who's a little bit tired. So let's, we got we to gotta get Jez pepped up, ready for the show. He's like, hey, can we have an hour long show today? I'm like, we can't, we can't have an hour long. Hour show. long? I never said that. You're like, we need to get rid of this topic and 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 this. To-. I'm just like, bro, people, people, people want their epic Xbox 2 podcast episode. We have to deliver every week. Well, some of the topics are stupid. Yeah, you know, whatever. We don't necessarily have to talk about some of those for long. It's just there for, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see we go. We we'll see we go. Yeah, I got up very early today. I had meetings I had to do, and then all more work stuff and blah 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 blah. Didn't even get chance to have a nap. Usually, I I try and get a nap in, but I just didn't have time. So we'll see we go. We'll see we go. I'm sure there'll be, there'll be plenty of reasons to be hyped up in a bit when we get into some of these oh, spicy it's gonna, topics. It's going to be super juicy. Super juicy. I, I told Jez one of the... It's going to be saucy to use a... Yeah, Jez's I expression. told Jez one of the uh, titles uh, for the podcast, because I just do it in like block, like topic, 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 or whatever. And I was like, should I put Starfield Delay as the first topic? Because there definitely seems to be... Um, a lot of people that are like Starfield delay or Starfield release date. And I, I was like, which one's trending more in Google? And I searched and it was release date. So I was like, oh, I go Starfield release date, you know, instead of Starfield delay. Uh, <laughs> but then I, but then I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Uh, some of the PlayStation guys might be mad at me, but I don't care. I was like topic three or whatever I put in there was PlayStation lies. And Jess was like, <laughs> Jess was like, oh boy, you're getting into the console console war fanboy stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about? They they're literally <laughs> lying in their 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 thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, but you can't you can't say that, Ryan. You can't I can, say that. I will say people it. Be sen- people get sensitive about these kind of reality checks. I know. That was I, know. Thrown I, I sent it to one of uh, I sent the uh, because uh, me and Cold Eastwood came up with the new a new style of thumbnail for the for for the videos. And I sent it to my PlayStation buddy, right? I'm like, hey, this, I, I'm sure you'll have a laugh at it, right? Because the text at the bottom is like, this is really pathetic, right? Yes, I did see it. It's and and uh, he's just like, I did see that, and it really triggered me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh-huh, that's exactly what I was going oh, for. Dear. Yeah, oh, oh dear oh. indeed, but... What is going on, everybody? I hope I hope you're all well on this wonderful Friday, March 10th. We have a very, very spicy show for everybody. You know, obviously Starfield stuff, new release date, Starfield Direct, Xbox Game Showcase, PlayStation and the ABK. You can tell the you can tell it's coming to an end because whew, they're getting desperate. And Microsoft's even running full page ads and ads in UK newspapers too. You know, they're not leaving anything to chance on this and a whole no, bunch I, of I, whole bunch I have of other no things. Idea what they're doing now. You have no yeah, idea. We'll get, we'll, yeah, but we'll, I mean we'll get into all this. How's your week we'll been? How's stuff. your week been? You you uh reviewing any any new games that are coming out soon? Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Stuff stuff I can't talk about. You know, I tell you, you trolling me about not finishing the game, uh-huh. taking it to heart, bro. Yeah, I know you are. Heart. I know you are. So I was like, "This is one way I can ensure I'll finish a game. Is that I have to if I if I review it, I'll have no choice but to finish it." So yeah, I've the game I'm reviewing, which I can't. I, I think I can't say what it is. I mean, it's probably pretty obvious what it is at this point, but um, I'm pretty near the end of it. So yes, I will have finished a game finally. <laughs> probably the first game finished this year oh man and just for once not just constantly play a service game you know um but yeah my my week's been all right you know it's uh i had last week off work 
so Ooh, a vacation. that was like a vacation yeah. yeah i didn't really do anything i just you know to to try and recharge and stuff so i had done a bunch of articles this week but our stats tracking system isn't picking up my articles for some reason which the tech team's looking at so i can't even tell if my articles have done any traffic which is really really annoying um but yeah it's that's been it really just working standard week and the game you know i I've been playing. I can't even talk about. Yeah. You know. So, so that's that's been my week. Uh, uh, I wonder what game. How's your wonder, week? How many games yeah. are coming out the rest of this month? I wonder what game it could possibly be. Hmm. This is, I mean, this is this has been a lot. This is just yeah. a lot of games. It's like especially if you start factoring in PC as well. It's it's been pretty wild, you know, pretty wild. But how's your week been, round? It's how's it's it's, it's it's been alright. It's it's it, it's it's been a, it's been a good one, you know. Uh, Shakespeare doing good. Thank you for all the messages from uh, people. Uh, you know, really concerned about what's going on with his health. You know, the, the last week he's been eating both meals every single day. Um, so he's good on that front. Uh, he's as energetic as he's always been, and I've never seen in that uh, kind of drop off. But I mean, the vets were always like, yeah, just watch his eating. If he starts to not eat again you know, like bring him in or whatever to get his like systems flush. But, you know, it's basically more just kind of, you're just waiting for things to progress. But other than that, mm. doing really well. Um, you know, just, uh, I, I, I started cause this is the last week, final episode of the last of us TV show on HBO. Episode nine oh. is coming on Sunday. So I binged the series. I watched eight episodes and it is incredible, Jez. Abs- I mean, I've, I've I've only heard good things. I've yes. only heard good things. I, is, like, I don't have. I don't even know what service it's on. In it's on HBO. I don't know what that is. We don't. We don't have HBO. We don't have HBO. In, okay. No, HBO is another thing. I think in in Britain it's on Now TV or something. But I got no idea what it's on in Germany. So I'll get around to watching it someday, probably. It but. is. So much like Last the TV was, show, um, but it's it's yeah. it's so good. I don't know how they're gonna do season two, considering how you know how the second game goes. Uh, but yeah, I basically binged like all eight episodes in like three days, and I'm, I can't could wait. They to like, s- could they do like a sort of spin-off for season two? Maybe, maybe like it follows a different character that uh, doesn't appear. Maybe from, from from the first game that doesn't appear in the second game. Maybe or something. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know but. Uh, that's what i've been watching i also started a a brand new uh trilogy i've been reading <laughs> as well the lycanius trilogy by james Isl- islington i'm on the second book an echo of things to come it's a it's a chonker of a book jazz it's 700 pages uh but i've also been playing yeah, some video games too many too many i know pages. but i've also been playing some video games so I, i'm dividing i'm dividing my time pretty good here uh Whoa. also uh i totally forgot this week Sunday clocks go forward for maybe the very last time. Um, oh, yeah, because Congress time. is going to pass a bill, right? Something like that. So this might be the last time we we move things forward. Now, also, your mic sounds a lot better and different. Did do you have a different setup? Did you get a new mic or anything? No, I've. Well, well, yeah, I'm in Germany now. Okay. So like the since since January, I was in the UK, and in the UK, I've got a USB microphone, which you know isn't the best but here i've got the elgato xlr setup with the wavelength and i've got a noise gate and you know and all that kind of stuff to kind of you know make everything feel sound better professional podcasting but, right professional podcasting but not only that rand mm-hmm. but our very kind discord members mm. have boosted the server to level three yes. which means we now get the 330 kilobyte per second audio bit rate on the channel so if I sound better, it's because A, thanks to everyone on the Discord for donating boosts. The boost. And B, I've got the XLR setup. So I think when I go back to the UK next time, I'm going to get an XLR mic. I'll probably just get exactly the same setup as I got here because it's very good. Like Elgato Wave and the Elgato mic and the Elgato stand. It's just, it's just all good stuff. Should, I really should, like I really X, dig Maybe we stuff. should get the Xbox 2 sponsored by Elgato. You know, maybe. Oh, God. Nah, couldn't, couldn't do that. Couldn't do that because I review their stuff. Oh, it create, yeah. It would, create, yeah. it would create an ethical. I don't conundrum. review their stuff, though. Yeah, you, you could get that stuff, I guess. But 
But Ron, speak speaking of um, sponsorships. Yes, we we have, we have some housekeeping. <laughs> And yeah, some to do. the wonderful people at Manscaped have uh, sponsored this episode. Just has just has a very spicy, very yeah. spicy ad read here. And make sure you pay attention to the very first sentence. Okay, okay, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, guys, once again, the Xbox Two podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Hey, Rand, if I was a Sony attorney. I'd want to be rocking some Manscaped deodorant to cover up that scent of desperation. Mm. In- <laughs> Indeed. Spring has sprung, almost. Is it spring yet? It'll be spring on March 21st, I believe. Well, that's, well oh, this is a little bit early then, but whatever. Indeed, spring has sprung. And our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, have the best tools for some spring cleaning in your pants. <laughs> trust me <laughs> your confidence will be blooming like the flowers and it'll smell even better <laughs> look your best this spring <laughs> and join the other 8 million men who trust Manscaped use code XB2 to get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com razors, cologne, boxers deodorant and much more at manscaped.com with checkout code xb2 and thanks to manscaped for sponsoring <laughs> this video <laughs> oh man uh, yeah I, I i picked i picked the spring ad read and i was like shit it's not actually spring yet <laughs> oh well whatever hey you <laughs> know like, <laughs> There's gotta like a get, gotta get storm some... going on outside my window, by the way. I like if if there's like crazy noises coming through, like uh, sounds of like I don't know thunder and shit. It's because there's a full blown storm going on outside the window right now. So that's that's pretty springy kind of yeah. weather. And you know what? We we definitely know that Jim Ryan is definitely wearing some manscaped deodorant to cover oh, up yeah. all those all that desperation. Oh yeah, desperation and and lies. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, Code XB2, 20% off free shipping at Manscaped. Thank you to them. And we also have the wonderful people at Patreon.com. Uh, you know, Patreon.com slash XB2. Uh, we got some shout outs here. I'll do those. We got uh, the Grand Bip. We got Chris Perney, Starsman, Hey Blinken, The Bearded Tate, Sleets, XZ, Army Dude, 52C, Mr. Butter Jeans, William Schum- Schumacher. Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Tyler, Gunstar75, Ronic Donkey99, C Money, Mario Kart Madman on YouTube, Makazilla, Haters Will Be Haters, myself, Randall Thor19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Jack Mihoff, Katriox, Ricky Felon, <laughs> Bright Tundra. <laughs> what? Jack Mihoff. Jack Mihoff, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's what it says, although it's spelled like M I H. Mihoff. O A F F, but whatever. <laughs> Jasper Shap, Joseph Campbell, Sub to Jez's Only Beans, Mr. Joanna Dark, Justin Duell, Frank Mariano, P. P. Bro King, uh, Justin Miller, Asa T. and Madison, Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo, a G, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin, Justin Sago, Andrew Courtney, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, Wolfgang KPZ, and Ralph Wiggum. Thank you to all the incredible Patreon supporters we should have um an xbox 2 ultimate this tuesday um yes this tuesday as well and then we're 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 trying to figure out who would be some a guest for xbox 2 plus one later in the month uh tom henderson and chess says i need to do a british accent next week it, my, my accent is is, yeah. is horrible but Maybe we should get Tom Henderson on and make him leak stuff i i did see tom on twitter was talking about starting his own podcast so oh. You know, inter- interesting, um, Jez, because it came up uh, yesterday. I saw a picture of you at the uh, briefing the other the other day. Yes, and, uh, me and Tom Warren. Tom Warren, you you out. and Tom Warren sitting sitting side by side, and Tom Warren said that you didn't bring your laptop and you were live blogging the event from your phone. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I. Th- I I've never been to a formal press conference like that before, and I wasn't expecting tables. So you like, weren't expecting every, tables, okay? No, I wasn't expecting tables, and I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring my Razor Blade 17 Pro and try and use it on my lap. This thing's huge. It's really heavy. It's like seven kilograms or something." 
Uh, so I, I wasn't expecting tables. So I didn't bring a laptop. And then everyone else is there in their suits, all professional and shit. I was like, well, screw it. I'll just tweet that shit out on my phone, you know. It's, why not, you know. <laughs> but um, why not indeed? Oh, uh, man. Yeah. I, got, I got some. I got some use out of the the little uh, Samsung Galaxy Note pen because it's a little pen with the the Samsung S twenty three Ultra. I was rocking that pen, one note, scribbling away. But yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. It was really interesting. They, they had macaroons. Do you know how a macaroon is, Ryan? A macaroon. What the hell is a macaroon? It's like it's like a French a French little French thing with oh. with jam in it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I, it was tasty. Like a little, little, I don't know, a little pastry thing. I right. don't even know what it, it, what it is. It's like a little, little sweet Yeah, and you're thing. not really like, explaining it very well. No, I'm not. But I was like, wow, Microsoft's really bribing the press with these macaroons, man. Mm. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was fun hanging out with Tom and, you know. Did you go drinking with Tom? Uh, yeah, well, kind of. We, we, we were going to go, we went for a beer before the, before the thing. And I was like, well, I'll have, I'll have a Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. It's 4 p.m. And I double. double. And I was like, well, uh, I was kind of like, I need, I, need, I need some Dutch courage, man. That's what we call it in Britain. <laughs> Is that, so I was like, yeah, you need I'll some, have another one. <laughs> did you need some Dutch courage for last week's podcast when you were drunk as a skunk by the end of the show? Oh, man. Because you were drunk as a skunk. That was bad. I said a miracle I wasn't sick last week. Well, I was just like, I literally thought, I had the I had the bottle down and I was like, I'll just have a couple. And then I drank the whole bottle. So mm. I don't know what's wrong with me, man. But yeah, no more alcohol for a while. I haven't got any left yeah. anyway. We we were doing no- we're doing a four hour show last week and Jez is like, screw it, let's do five hours. I'm like, no. <laughs> not, <laughs> not a chance. Yeah. But um yeah. anyways. Oh, wow. Thank you guys for being here so much. Uh, if you could do us a big favor, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Almost at 92.2 on the way to 100K some point this year. I'm going to try to make more videos. Share this out. Let everybody know the Xbox 2 podcast is live right now. And shout out to everybody listening to this later, whether it's here on YouTube or on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else you listen to podcasts on your apps. If you could do us a favor as well, make sure you uh, give us a five-star review or one star if you really hate the show. I know some people do do that, uh, but we appreciate any any help whatsoever from you guys. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's get to read some of these Super Chats, and then we'll get into everything. Cause oh, I, God. What? Some, what? Someone in chat just reminded me of um, what happened on Twitter when I was drunk. What happened? <laughs> What'd you do? I... T- oh and you said something in exile and they said you want us yeah. to hold your hair yeah <laughs> yeah i tweet i tweeted some i just started tweeting in, in exile for some reason i was like wasteland's better than fallout in exile rules or something and then in exile replies do, do you want us to hold your hair again <laughs> oh god come on christ Jess. come on oh, man so super chats we have we have one here from mav aka fun speculation who had a four-hour podcast with the one and only pong so he and mav were the leaders of the marcher movement the people that believed starfield was mysteriously going to shadow drop in march well guess what that dream is dead they all drank the kool-aid and they're no longer with us uh, Mav says, Marchers concede. We drank our Kool-Aid yesterday. What a year 2023 is gr- 2023 is great. No more 12-month shows, though. Hit the like button, everyone. Starfield. Mm. Indeed. Please, yes, Xbox, no more 12-month shows. And we'll talk about that later because there are definitely people who are like, no, 12. Like my buddy, I think my buddy SubZX is like, no, they need to do 12-month shows. Just keep on doing it. I'm like, nah, absolutely not. It's a mistake. And I don't know why anybody's pushing them to do the 12-month thing. It doesn't matter, Rand. It's not like they signed a contract in blood. Didn't you see the asterisk at the end? Didn't you see the graphic where they said all the games, but then it said asterisks, uh, games targeting to release in the next 12 months. They didn't promise anything, Rand. Is that is that what we're going with? Is that they didn't promise anything? Even though I could have sworn <laughs> Sarah Bond said, for the first time ever, this show... It's going to feature games that you can play in the next 12 months. That's right. 
I didn't hear anything about, well, maybe you can expect some of these games to not make those release dates. That's what some people are saying. But whatever. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Sergio Diaz in the Super Chat says, Super excited for Starfield. You can see how much work they've put in since the 2022 gameplay showcase. This delay really is worth it. Yeah, I mean, some of the clips we did see from the, the video definitely seemed much improved. Uh, can't wait to actually get the full breakdown. Uh, Rick Gaffney says, you guys rock. Please hit the like button, people. Thank you, Rick. And yes, hit the like button. Let's get it up to, I don't know, some ridiculous high, high number before the end. Let's, let's, I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to tune in for this show. But hopefully hopefully it's a bit. You know, there's there's a lot of, lot of crazy news today. Or a lot of crazy news this week. Uh, Punkadish. Member for 23 months. What's going on, buddy? He says, Jim Ryan is a joke. Have a great show. I'm ready to listen. I, I think I saw, like, uh, Tom's, uh, like, Tom Warren's tweet about, like, uh, Xbox will irrevocably damage the industry if they're allowed to have this. And then I saw Tom Henderson be like, I got the receipts where Jim Ryan's basically saying, <laughs> what was he saying? Like, uh, yeah, we ain't worried about Game Pass at all. <laughs> We've yeah. sold more PlayStations in 10 years than they have subscribers, and they've been doing that for six and seven. So it's like Jim Ryan saying one thing to the regulators and saying something completely different behind the scenes. It's almost like they're not being truthful. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. Shout out to Tom for actually giving us that info, or you know, writing that info in Insider Gaming. Which, by the way, Jez, I don't know if you saw, Insider Gaming pissed off a lot of journalists this week. A lot of people, Dude. a lot of people subtweeting <laughs> Tom uh, this week. Ta- ta- a lot ta- of people. Ta- Tom perpetually pisses off uh, before in the media. I think uh, there's nothing new there. A lot of people. By now. Uh, I yeah. just read some stuff and I'm like, oh, they must be upset. Insider Gaming had the whole paradox uh, event yes. thing embargo that somebody sent them that they just put out but it was just like I, yes, I'd, I'd read these tweets from these these journalists and they'd be like you know uh, keeping our embargoes is a sacred trust you can't break that <laughs> you know which whatever oh, I mean it's just it's just funny to see like and then people like yeah. your website's gonna go nowhere nobody's gonna trust you okay yeah. <laughs> whatever anyways I thought that was just really funny uh, Miguel Ivers, member for nine months, says Xbox or Kings are setting themselves up for in- incendiary headlines regarding their brand. Starfield gets delayed in quotes. I hope they drop that this year. God Sitman says, did you see Dead on 2 trailer? Looks good. Yeah, it looks looks very fun. Very very interested in playing it uh, sometime this year. Very cool. I, I think April, April 21st, I think. Yeah. Uh, April 21st, I believe, is when it's supposed to come out. Looks spicy. Yeah, and then the following week is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and uh, yeah, I, I cannot wait for that one. Johnny Sin sends one scale bomb coming. Uh, hopefully, never at all. Period. Uh, hopefully, our buddy Special Nick is wrong about that. I, uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind them working with Platinum, but I definitely don't really care about scale bound. Oh, did we really? <sighs> Every, Some, it's, every it's, week it's, it's almost a meme now so every, every week every, every week go- someone does it it's I on think, purpose I think we got through a whole show without talking about Scalebound last week no no somebody actually. somebody said something at the very end about Scalebound it happens every <laughs> week you know I, I, I might I want I, maybe I should put a moratorium on like Scalebound mentions it's like if you're gonna mention Scalebound it's gotta be in a $50 super chat or something Other, <laughs> otherwise I'm just gonna skip over it cause it's every week oh man yeah oh man uh, Space Dovakin, Rand, tell us we're getting your awesome crying Jimbo imitation today. Love you guys. Keep up the great work. You see, when I record my videos, everything I record is off the top of my head. So I'm not really, I don't have a plan of what, I mean, sure, I have an idea of things I would want to say. But like when I, when I'm talking, things just like pop in and I just, I just say stuff. So sometimes I'll slip into my fanboy voice, which I couldn't even really do right now. Like if you just, if you just, push me to do the fanboy voice. I don't even know how that sounds. It was just, it just has to kind of come out. Oh, actually I sort of do notice. I was like, Rank. Oh no, that's not the, that's not the, the fanboy voice. How does that one go? Do you remember how the fanboy, my, my fanboy voice goes? I forgot. Uh, I couldn't do it, man. We, you mm. just have to wait until you're in the yeah. moment. But we got, we got the Jim Ryan one though. And I, I love Jim. He's my dude. Like, come on. 
flying, crying, gym, dance moves, saving private Ryan. <sighs> I mean, it's great. It's, it's, I love it. It's, it's more than I could possibly ask for. Right. He's, he's I, a lot of people are out there being like, I don't like Jim. It's like, I love Jim. Love what he's done for PlayStation. Love his quotes. Hopefully Jim and Phil remain heads of their respective companies forever. I love them. <laughs> uh, Chaos Might says, Jez is playing Peppa Pig World <laughs> Adventures, which comes out on March 17th. If not, then Resident Evil 4 Remake. Hmm. Maybe. Mm. Peppa, someone noticed that we have Peppa Pig in the intro trailer. Yes. I, is... I just, I just, I just, I was like, Sean, you got to put Peppa in there. Like, behind Rand's back. <laughs> So I know Rand would say no, because we all know, we all know, guys. Randy's very much no fun allowed. That's not guy. true. I'm very it's much hella fun true, allowed. bro. What do you mean? What have I ever yeah, said? Like... You can't do something. Oh, there you was the what? You wouldn't let me put Pokemon the... in the intro. No, absolutely. Well, this is a Nintendo podcast. I wasn't. You you weren't allowing me to put Sony games in the intro. Was we we're not a Sony podcast. We're not a Nintendo podcast. Well, why would we have Pokemon? Screw you! You can play. You can play. You can play Pokemon on PC. If you want to go start a Nintendo podcast, go right <laughs> ahead. But this is not a Nintendo. I mean, no, we, I, we barely I ever talk about, about Nintendo. Pokemon, man. Nintendo doesn't mean shit to me. I only care about Pokemon. That's okay, some, that's it. Well, guess what? They're never. They're never well, being the intro. Well, actually, there there was I, one time I, where I told I you a Metroid podcast. There was one time I did told tell you no. You can't. I forget what it was. You came in here and you were like, "I'm gonna make a thumbnail." For the show, and I told you no. Do you remember what it was? Because it was it was something. It was it, I forget. It was like something happened, and you're like, I'm gonna have. Oh, it was. It, I think it was for the layoffs. You were gonna like, I want Satya with like, <laughs> with like gravestones on the on the thumbnail or whatever. Remember? <laughs> and I was yeah. like, I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and you were like, Come on, why not? It'll be fun. And I'm like, No. Absolutely, you were not. Oh, we're not man. doing that. Oh god! Yeah, uh, Supernova <sighs> says, "How is Avowed? Is the game in good shape and treated well?" So Avowed the summer game reveal. I mean, I don't know much more about Avowed than you guys do, really. I mean, I saw the footage that Jez showed me, which when you show what you showed that to me, what last year, I believe. But even still, that footage was from like 2021. And the game's yeah, gone the avowed, under, 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 like, yeah, I know the avowed footage is so old at this point. The avowed footage we had, it's so, so, so old. And I haven't got any fresh, like, I'm expecting it to look radically different from what I saw. Yeah, so. I mean, what, what I saw was using assets from the outer worlds, for God's sake, you know. Right. I um, doubt that it's going to look like that. Because I was reading the only thread that matters on Reset Era, the Xbox official thread. Um, and they were talking about, avowed in your previous info so for anybody who's forgot what was the previous info that you had on avowed and what's what do you think's changed well i man beyond the gameplay footage which i described in in the preview one of the things i was unsure about was whether it was going to have co-op or not right because it it, at one point it sounded like it was going to have co-op and then like some of the some of the literature i read made it sound like they wanted to cut co-op because it was making things too complicated, but maybe they've maybe they didn't cut it. Maybe they were just expressing the fact that they were frustrated about frustrated about it. So I honestly don't know if it's going to have co-op or not at this point. But maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We just have to wait and see. Um, but for me, like this, it would make sense for it to have co-op. I think because you know, it's sort of um, inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. And that kind of experience is, you know, the ultimate co-op game, isn't it? Mm. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, none of the footage I had had co-op, any hint of co-op in it. It was all solo play, um, you know, fighting the little reptilian Zao rips and stuff like that. Looked a lot of fun, you know. But we'll see. Right. We'll see. Did it have dungeons like uh, Skyrim did? Or were you not too sure on that? Not it. Not too sure. I mean, from what what I saw, like I described it as the outer world Skyrim. From okay. what I saw, you know, it seemed like large world, like with interior locations. You know, you saw it. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, it's been a while though, some, and it was very, yeah. very. 
alpha <clears throat> rough footage. So it'd be, yeah, it was very, very alpha. Very interesting. Hopefully it makes an appearance this year and we can see more. Obvi- I mean, I don't think they can do a CGI trailer. They got to show that gameplay that people have been craving. So hopefully it's there. But yeah, uh, Sith Lord, yeah. he says, happy Mario Day, gentlemen. Today's Mario Day? It's Mario, Mario Day? Day? Or is it because the new trailer came out, I think, yesterday? Oh, I don't know. Which, oh, that, shit. I that, need to go and watch that then. Yeah, that looks that uh Mario movie trailer looks I mean that movie looks great. Can you can you do a Mario impression? Hey, it's me, Mario. <laughs> I don't know, is that a good one? Uh, hey, it's, it's me. Story. Mario. It's me, Mario. Mario. Let's go. Yeah. Uh we got uh ju- <laughs> Oh, March 10th cuz it looks like Ma 10 Mario. Uh okay. See that that doesn't that doesn't work in in British because we put the day first. I suppose when we write it out, we do put the month first. I don't know. Uh, just bring a game and says Starfield hype <laughs> has begun. Have a great show. The, definitely the hype has has begun. And uh, yeah, we we're gonna try to put on a, a really good show. Uh, we have uh, Web Dave here. What's going on, buddy? He says best podcast duo. Let's get ran to 100k. Yeah, we know we get to 100K. You know, my promise is about being on camera. Maybe I'll even go on before that. I don't know. I've been thinking more and more about that. Maybe I just buy a camera, get a green screen or something, and put my ugly face on cam. I don't know. And then people will be like, turn it off, turn it off, go back to avatars or something. Anyways, uh, Jonas Tadat says, Lulu is queen, owned Jimmy Boy. Yeah, Lulu making people really upset. The discourse surrounding what she said on certain places is just. It's just like, uh, I don't like I her, you, but uh, are we even sure that this quote is legit and actually was said? And I think it's pretty unethical to leak private conversations at a private meeting or whatever. Like, okay, you sure just Jim Ryan saying that they don't want a deal? They just want to block the merger? You don't think that's important information to have considering PlayStation is accusing Microsoft of not wanting to actually negotiate with them in any way, shape, or form? Like, come on. Mm. Uh, we'll get into that we'll get into that yeah uh let's see what else we got dave ramos says any word on if microsoft will mention open ai at gdc jazz uh think so i mean it's 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 gonna be on the horizon you know i mean open ai is gonna bring a lot of benefits for game development presumably i think like they'll they'll be using it to write non non-consequential dialogue side quests maybe stuff like that probably like i i think i think i said on a previous show like if you go if you go on bing and you say write me write me 10 quest ideas for world of warcraft it will do it with like law accurate suggestions it's crazy it's really crazy and they can see how like that can inform game development but i don't know if they're quite ready to get there yet clearly they see this as a as a way to take it to Google right now. They, did you see around that Bing crossed 100 million daily active users for the first time I did. ever? I did. Is Bing. That, is that people because of Bing. is that because of ChatGPT? A third of people are using ChatGPT apparently. So yeah, basically. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, it's uh, going to put me out of a job, bro. Bro, I've already seen some people. I mean, there's the whole Mid Journey thing uh, about people using Mid Journey to create art and yeah. whatever. But I've seen people. I read an article from somebody who's like, "I'm using ChatGPT to write books that I now sell on Amazon." And it was it was always <laughs> that, yeah. it was always a dream of mine to be published, but I just didn't have the time or the talent. But now I basically have ChatGPT write the article, write the novels for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can publish them on Amazon, and it's like, bro, bro. you ain't writing anything. And, and it's funny because I'll have I'll shit. have these conversations with Gaz and Colt, and because Gaz and Colt are very much like 100 percent behind Mid Journey and stuff, and like we'll have these conversations, and I'm like, Mid Journey is one thing, but like if you're using ChatGPT to create a, like a, a book, the, ChatGPT is just going to plagiarize from authors online like from work like and then and the guys I mean, yeah. the guy literally is like i didn't I, it was always a dream 
and I just couldn't do it because I didn't have the time, the patience, or the energy or the talent. And now I can. I'm a published author. It's like you didn't do anything. You literally. And he's like, you know, I had to give a direction. Oh, that's that's the thing they'll use. I had to put in a, a little direction and a little thing. You know, I had to, I tweak it a little bit with little 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 whatever. And I'm just like, really? Is that what we're doing? Is is that? Well, like, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like. It's like anything, you know, like when the internet first came out, it completely upended entire industries. You know, it's, it's AI will be the same. It's like you'll adapt to it or die, you know. Um, I saw around, uh, I saw someone using a chat, uh, an AI model. I don't know what model it was, but they, <laughs> you can find it on YouTube. They have like, they trained a voice AI to, um, to sound like Obama and Trump playing some shoot 'em up you know oh really yeah it's crazy what's what some of these machine learning models can do so like um yeah maybe maybe rand in the future we can train an ai to do the podcast for us mm. and have write it in bing and just just chill just chill you know? just being <laughs> just, just, the- just being <laughs> chat with everybody like while the ai yeah. The AI yeah, we'll just hang out and chat with everyone. <laughs> we'll, we'll just watch the AI with the chat. I don't know. Shit's crazy, man. But I don't know. That's we have tech, uh, Nintendo the Don the Otaku saying the September release date is just the red herring so that they can surprise drop it in March. Don't falter. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> March Fielders. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, and he also says all they have to do is drop a Starfield and Forza demo before July. That way, every game will be playable in the next twelve months. Checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you want to, I suppose on the technicality. Oh man, that's funny. I mean, I guess I guess they wouldn't have lied in that case, or did they really oh. lie? I know some people are like definitely torn. Uh, about about all that. Uh, Johnny Sin says, Rand is your Lambo Xbox green. I mean, I wish it was, but no. <laughs> my my car is not green. It's basically silver. You've got a car? Yeah, I got a car. Who doesn't got I a car? I did not know that. Yeah. Where bro. do you go? Nowhere, really. It just kind of sits there. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere, so it's kind of just like That's whatever. That's what I'm saying. You went you from home. Why you got a car? I mean, because it, oh, I, had a, I had a car, bro. I'm sorry. When's the last time you drove it? I mean, to go to the I'm vet. To remember. To go to the vet. Oh, you go to the vet. Eight okay. days in a row. So, yeah. that was, before that, that's a good question. I don't, you know, I got. I mean, yeah, don't don't really have to go anywhere. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a busybody. You know, I get a lot. Pretty <laughs> everything I need basically delivered by Amazon. So, I often think like I need like I've just got this weird thing in my head where I want a four by four, a uh, four wheel drive car. In case there's like a zombie apocalypse and I need to go off road, mm, that wouldn't be a bad that, investment. I mean, it'd that, be a better investment insane. than your Diablo Four statue. That you, <laughs> how, how much did you spend on that statue? Six hundred bucks or something? It was a uh, seven hundred pounds, which is, it, is like is it looking at you right now? No, because it's in England, so I'm not even with it right now. Mm. But do, dude, I don't regret it at all. Nah, I, I do a little bit maybe, especially because. You know, there's a, there's a there's a lot of other things I probably should have been not wasting the money on, but but also the, the we might all die in an asteroid. I, I read an article the other day that there's there's an asteroid flying by Earth in 2030 that's got a one in 400 chance of hitting hitting the Earth. Damn. So maybe at that point, who cares? You know, who cares what statues you got? At least like you know, um, at least I'll I'll go out. With a with a Lilith statue. At least you know? there is that. Well, yeah, yeah, we have a super chat here from Face Twenty Three B Can Y. Microsoft insists Game Pass prices quote will not increase as a result of the Activision merger. I mean, they could also say that if they ever do raise the price of Game Pass, that it's because of economic situations, just like how Sony, you know, said that that's the reason they had to raise the price of the PS five was because of inflation and supply, uh, disruption. Right. So, you know, maybe they're like, well, we're not actually raising it because of the Activision merger. We're raising it because of other, other factors. Um, but I mean, that's all to be determined if it goes through, if it doesn't go through, they're definitely fighting 
fighting for the CMA. I, I did notice that Sony's response to the CMA's remedy thing was like 13 pages of Microsoft's 30. And it was just like completely just Microsoft's lawyers just like dismantled everything. And Sony's was just basically throwing out conspiracy theories about stuff. It's great. It's all, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later. Um, because, uh, we got a lot to say about it. Uh, painful discourse says spot on Rand Gaz and cult don't know how AI works. No, I mean, they use mid journey quite a bit and, uh, they love it. I was more speaking about like the AI for writing a novel. It's just like, I don't know. It's kind of a slippery slope there. Uh, Canada. Is that Canada? Canada. Yeah. Canada says jazz last week. You said Xbox is lacking games that make you feel. Have you played Hellblade? Yeah. If so, no feels. Thoughts on the game? Cheers. Well, okay. We don't even need Jez to answer this because here's what... See, Jez loves to troll me because Jez knows I really like Hellblade 1. And Jez knows that Hellblade 2 is my most anticipated game from Xbox Game Studios. And you know what Jez always says about it? It's just a walking oh. simulator, mate. You don't do anything in the game, mate. It's, it's, for, it's, it's, a, it's a baby game, mate. Right? So, it's a baby game. You, mean, you, you, you basically say it's a baby game. It's just a pedestrian game. You it's know. A, yeah. So it's a pedestrian simulator. It's get, very pretty. Have you played Hellblade uh, 1? Yeah, I've, I've got one of the few games I've completed. Wow, <laughs> one of like the handful. Okay. I quite like it with headphones. It's kind yes. of like got the whole ASMR thing going on. You know? No? No, ASMR. I mean, yeah, it has all the different voices. Uh, it's definitely an incredible experience. <laughs> and I, I, liked, I liked the combat all five seconds of it oh see here we go why, why are you doing this <laughs> nah I, you know i appreciate it for what it is but what it is ain't what i look for in a game so i am you know you know you do you man you do you bro i want more i want more game in my game bro Wh sorry <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever i just want great games it doesn't matter what type they're, you know, as long as they're not MMOs, I, I guess. See, I don't know. Like, we come to this impasse about stuff like Hellblade 2, and it doesn't really even matter because it's like, Jazz ain't going to finish anything, so pff, what of it, you know? <laughs> I will, so. Uh, maybe I just don't want games to end, and that's why I play That's why I play games that don't end. Yeah. <laughs> like, Warlords just added a new monster as well, so that that's going to be like, oh, well, that game's not going to end either. Oh, man. But I'm sure there's an end to that game where it's like the final hunt. Oh right? yeah, there is. There's a there is a final hunt, uh, but they've added a new they're adding a new monster, so it's like well, it's no longer the final hunt, you know. And they'll add another new monster, another new monster, and then do an expansion probably, and God knows what else. Yeah. Let's we'll see. Uh, Michael Perez says, since I know Rand loves Pokemon so much, what your guys' favorite Pokemon? Pokemon specifically for Jazz. I hate Pokemon. I honestly despise the franchise it was one of the worst games i ever had to play when i was forced to play it for charity jazz keeps on he keeps on like you gotta do it for charity you gotta do it for charity i'm like fine and then even even lately jazz is like we gotta do like a charity stream i'm like absolutely not we are not doing a charity stream and he's like come on for the kids i'm like i don't care about no kids i'm not playing stuff for for pokemon if you want to do something for, if you want me to play pokemon ever again it's for, it's a charity for that you know help rand's wallet essentially Bro, I am not. In I am not forcing myself to play through what is one of the worst franchises known to gaming, and I I know that's probably going to trigger a lot of people listening because they grew it's up with Pokemon. Me. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Like, and I, I I don't know how more, pl and I'm not exaggerating. That's the other thing. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in the show, maybe I exaggerate for entertainment <laughs> effect. Right, we talk about PlayStation Lives or whatever. It's more, you know, exaggeration to have fun, to keep the show spontaneous and things like that. I am not exaggerating when I talk about Pokemon Shield or Sword, whichever one that Jez made me play, being one of the absolute worst pieces of video games I have ever played in my entire life. Oh, and come I, on, I am somebody who played a ton of shovelware crap during the Xbox 360 well, and Xbox is, One man. era for achievements. <sighs> and I would rather play that stuff. I would rather play Barbie Puppy Rescue and have to pet puppies <laughs> and remove ticks from them and do all the stupid things you had to do. And Barbie Puppy Adventure that was like eight hours long or whatever. 
then play <laughs> that awful game. Pokemon Bro. is awful. Bro. You well You were playing it wrong for starters. Because you cheated. I, I you had, no. You had, you had someone send you a high level Pokemon and then you just one shot everything. So you completely sucked out any semblance of challenge out of the game. Is this not true? Is this not true, Rand? Um, well, no, that was like halfway through when I was like literally con- contemplating ending my life. Because <laughs> I hated myself and you so much. Oh. Because you were like, you have to do this. And we had, ra- how much money did we raise for charity with that? Uh, it's about eight hundred pounds. It was like eight hundred. So I was like, I felt like about a thousand dollars. I felt yeah. cornered. I felt like you guilted me into doing that. So I was like, I have to do this, and like I, I wanted to die. <laughs> I wanted to just curl up in a ball and just die. It was. It was. It was. It, honestly, words can't. Didn't, didn't, didn't you think it was epic? When no. You, you know, you popped your first Dynamax. And no. No. It was epically garbage. Dude, you know, you know I put 250 hours into that game. I, what is wrong with you? <laughs> put 250 I mean, I hours at least understand caught, World of Warcraft. I, dude, what is dude, wrong with you? I, pr- I print it because when you catch all the Pokemon in the Pokedex, you get a little certificate. I, I pr- screenshotted that and printed it off and stuck it on my wall. I'm really, really proud of my achievement, bro. <laughs> Whatever. I I, I oh, literally think Pokemon is honestly terrible. <laughs> my next my next tattoo is going to be a Pokemon, I think. So we, I will never do that He's again. Speechless. Never. He's speechless. What yes. what what Pokemon tattoo shall I get, Rand? I don't know. If you get a Pokemon tattoo, I'm looking for a new co-host. Colt is. Are you listening, Colt? <laughs> you know what? I'll be your new co-host on X and C. If if you can be my co-host on Xbox too, how's that? <laughs> Miles has got po- Miles has got a Pokemon tattoo sleeve, man. Yeah, but Miles doesn't podcast with me. He's not my partner. He's not my co-host. Yeah, but you, you go, you go, you go on his show though. So, I I don't spend fr- I don't spend four hours on a Friday with him. I don't converse with them in Twitter DMs every single day like me and you. I would <laughs> I would feel a certain way. I I I'd, I'd consider being like, you know what? It's time to end the Xbox Two. Two hundred and sixty episodes was great. Jazz has a Pokemon tattoo. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> And you'd have to explain to all the fans and all the people that watch why the show ended. Because you just had to ink yourself up with some, I don't know. Who would you Pikachu. ink yourself with? Pikachu? Nah, I want, <clears throat> I want to get a Poltergeist, man. Who the hell's it's that? Like, it's, like, it's a teapot Pokemon. Because I like tea, right? Oh. Poltergeist. Okay. Anyways, enough yeah. talking about this. We've been on, we've been talking about Nintendo too much on the show. And I'm, I'm feeling like my skin about the fall off Man. uh pushy polygon Tony, says uh Tony is um just dropped a hogwarts legacy code in chat oh that's that's great Ho- hopefully somebody grabs it and says thank you uh pushing polygon says what's your favorite game that you completed this year so far i would ask jazz but we know jazz hasn't uh completed anything so far uh me that's that's interesting toss up because we have dead space which was amazing but you have also hi-fi rush and I mean, honestly, I'll probably say Hi-Fi Rush because Death Space at the end of the day is a remake and Hi-Fi Rush was a brand new IP. So I will give the edge to Hi-Fi Rush for sure. Best game I played so far this year, a game that came out of nowhere, was incredible from beginning to the end. And it's a game where it's like, I need a sequel immediately. Probably the best Xbox exclusive to release since Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, March, I think we're at the three year anniversary. So yeah, that was the best Xbox game in the last three years. Yeah, but bro, they didn't, they didn't make it, bro. So it doesn't count, bro. Yeah, whatever. They didn't make it. They didn't, they didn't make it, bro. Whatever. They, they did to me. It matters to me. Rand also hates puppies. I love puppies. What are you talking about? Um, let's see what else we got here. We got Michael Perez saying, love your article on the SSD storage for Xbox jazz. When do you think the contract with Seagate will expire? Yes, you finally got around to making that article. Um, so what's going on with the uh, the SSD? So are we basically screwed for this generation, Jazz? Yeah, I mean, should we just talk about that now? Yeah, because it's a topic, right? Yeah, yeah. And we can just get out of the way. But um, yeah, so 
for the last uh, million years, people have been asking me to find out more about the Xbox storage card situation. So like, for those who don't know, um, well, everyone here should probably know about this con- controversy by now, is that the Xbox Series X and S use a proprietary, proprietary storage solution based on Compact Flash or CF Express. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very expensive. So, like, one terabyte of CF Compact Flash storage is about $200, I think, off the top of my head. And um, the equivalent uh, one terabyte, you know, NVMe M.2 drive, which is what PlayStation uses, costs about $100. And, like, you can get deals that send it even less, maybe $80. Black Friday, there were, there were one terabyte SSDs for PlayStation going for, like, you know, anywhere between like 70 and a hundred dollars, you know? So, um, Xbox fans are playing, paying a hefty premium for, for, uh, their storage cards on the Xbox console. And, you know, I did some investigating, speaking to peeps, trying to find out what the hell, you know, what the deal is basically. And I was essentially told that when the Xbox series X and S was spec'd out, um, they hadn't expected that, the top line NVMe M.2 drives would come down so much in price. Like when they expect, when they spec this out originally, Compact Flash was comparable in price, you know. Um, but over the years and since the pandemic, um, the prices of these things have just crashed. Like M.2 drives, M.2 drives have just crashed in price. And I think that's because there's like an overabundance of stock and there's not enough demand in the market. Like, PC prices have crashed and demand for PCs have crashed, which means demand for PC components have crashed. So at the end of the day, it was a bet that Microsoft made on Compact Flash, which, you know, does have benefits. Um, so I'm told that it is, uh, it's more performant over time, less susceptible to degradation. They're typically used in high-end video cameras, like the movie industry uses Compact Flash for, their, for, for stuff, apparently. And... Um, and uh, it's really good for burst photography and and that kind of stuff. But um, the fact of the matter is that Microsoft didn't anticipate this price crash that we see in M.2 drives are having. And um, yeah, it just kind of is what it is. You know, just, there's just nothing more to say about it, really. Um, Fifth Horseman in chat says, can you find out when the Seagate exclusivity deal runs out? I don't think, I'm not sure it will run out. Um, I couldn't find any information about whether or not that was a thing as an exclusivity deal or just more to do with the fact that Microsoft's version of Compact Flash is proprietary. You can't take Microsoft's memory cards and then use them in another Compact Flash interface because they have like they're a little bit different, you know. So Seagate are manufacturing them exclusively for Xbox. So, you know, I have seen some aftermarket adapters and I haven't, I'm too scared to try and test one in case it breaks my Xbox or something. Um, but there are some adapters on Amazon. I don't know if anyone in chat's tried using one. I haven't tried using one yet. Um, you know, maybe I can find someone crazy enough to, to try them out, but it's, yeah, it just is what it is. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. There is, I haven't got any indication the people I spoke to said we don't expect the prices to come down in any meaningful way, you know, over time, you know. So it just kind of is what it is, you know, unfortunately. Um, Dude, that sucks. Yeah. Because basically you, sucks. you're saying like that two terabyte drive is basically going to be stuck at 400 for the entire gen and the one terabyte one's going to be 200. Like, yeah, that is. Yeah. What a, I mis- mean, what a mistake that was then. Oh, geez. Yeah. I mean, SSD prices fluctuate um, aggressively, and I think they just made the wrong bet here, it t- at least in terms of value. But, you know, once you've bought it, you've got it forever, presumably. But then it's like I wrote in the article, you know, it's kind of like, um, imagine you spend like $200 on, on this storage device, and then it'd be one thing if they could guarantee that the next consoles were going to use them. Because it'd be like, well, you get this storage card, you can use it on the next-gen consoles as well. But chances are that the speeds are going to go up again next-gen, at which point it's like, um, you know, 
what's the point in investing in it? The clearly the most cost effective solution is to just if you don't want to spend the two hundred dollars, just get a regular USB storage device, store the games on there, you know, use it as an archive or whatever, and then transfer the games to your main hard drive when you want to play them, I guess. Um so yeah. I don't know. Rand, some people are saying that there's there's ads appearing during the show. Do you know anything about this? I mean no. Is that a new th- is that then a, that could be a new thing YouTube YouTube's thing? put in. Yeah. I don't know. That's I mean, crazy. I, we'll have to look into that. I've never Some people are saying we keep getting ads, but yeah, that's some that might be something new. Man, that sucks if if that sucks if that's a new thing and we didn't even know about it. Don't they do that on Twitch for live streams? Yeah, they do. I yeah, I mean I didn't change anything how I set up the show, so that would be completely on YouTube's end. Yeah, we need to look into that, I suppose. But yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the SSD stuff. We just have to um you know, see how it goes, I guess. Wait, are you serious? They're actually running ads during the show? Yeah, that's what it says. That is just sort of mad. That is awful. <laughs> like I, I, yeah, yeah. like I set up the show like I normally do. I didn't. There was nothing different. I mean, I just that is so, so weird. I'll have to, I'll have to look into because I definitely don't want ads to run. Because there have been things, yeah, there have been look. things where like YouTube will, YouTube will say this would be a per- perfect time to insert an ad, and I'm like, no. Uh, you know, it's like not, not during the live show. Like, yeah, we know people watch later or whatever. Sure. But like not during, you know, the live experience. So the fact that they just kind of, oh yeah, okay. So there's a new there's a new setting: automatically place mid roll ads during your stream. Oh. that's new. Shall I turn that off? I'm just scared. If I turn that off now, will it break the stream? Yeah, just I guess, I guess leave that on for now. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, for that's next new. Show. Live live ad settings. That's new. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Shit. <laughs> Oh man, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty nuts. That's that. Yeah, that's pretty. like horrible because that ruins the experience. Yeah, they turned it on by default, and uh, I'd never seen that before. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. There might be an enable ads option before, but I think it was like I, I didn't. I didn't make any changes, so I think that was enabled by yeah, default. I, think, I don't know. Yeah, you got pre-roll and post-roll enabled, but not mid-roll. Anyway, this Anyways, is the easiest way yeah. to do this, I Sorry about that. Uh, I have no idea that this was actually... That's completely completely brand new. But uh, mm. let's see. Um, yeah, the, the SSD stuff is horrible. Like, the, the prices, the fact that they're not going to come down. It's It was a mistake. Um, they made the wrong choice on that one. And hopefully they change yeah. that for maybe future systems, maybe for the next system or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Hargeet, for the uh for the Hogwarts Legacy code. Uh, hopefully somebody uh, got that and gave him a big thank you. Uh, we have something here from M- Inimatic Dream saying every Pokemon game after the second gen is crap except for remakes for those generations. Also, GameStop canceled my Resident Evil Four Collector's Edition. Yeah, I did see that GameStop was canceling Collector's Editions. Um, yeah, I wonder. I, I wonder. That, yeah. Wonder what that's all about. Although I'm, I'm completely all digital, so physical doesn't really matter. Although you know, some people might think it's weird, where it's like I'm all digital for my video game stuff, but like I'm all physical for books. So I have like so many books, bro. You know, um, I don't know. There's something about a physical book rather than audio book. I don't know. I can't. I just can't pay attention to somebody reading something to me, my mind, my mind seems to wander. So I can't do audiobooks. and like having a book, uh, like an ebook always kind of felt like you're just reading an email and I don't like, didn't like that experience. Plus there's something about holding the book in your hand and smell of it and things, I guess maybe I'm just waxing romantically about it. But, um, we have Zatanna Bathory who says, if the deal fails, could ABK do COD exclusive to Xbox? I mean, they could, but is that a realistic scenario? No. I mean, Xbox is saying that they can't even make it exclusive to them because of the economics of the situation. It like makes too much money to just not put it on PlayStation and everywhere else. So it wouldn't be worth it for Activision, they would need some like huge payment to make up for the loss of PlayStation sales. And Microsoft wouldn't do that. So like there, yeah, there's no way 
that could change. If the deal failed, I mean, maybe you're looking at the marketing going back to Xbox for X amount of time. Uh, we already know Phil has said that they won't do like Xbox exclusive skins and things like that. So they wouldn't do that. So the most you're looking for is maybe, maybe like a marketing deal. Um, but that's, that's about it. I don't, I don't think you can really look at anything like that. Um, Dead Planet says, are reading book, are audiobooks reading in your opinion? Uh, I've had this discussion with the buddy of mine constantly. Uh, this might sound awful, but audiobooks to me aren't reading. And that may sound elitist, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying reading is better because audiobooks are, you, you listen to a story being told. Like, Right now, you guys are all listening to this podcast. You would never say, I read Rand and Jez's podcast. So some people listen to audiobooks, and then they'll say, I read that book. It's like, well, you didn't actually read it. You listened to it, right? So to me, there's a distinct difference between the two, and I'm not saying at all one of them is, is better than the other because you're both getting the information. You can even say the audiobook experience might be better than reading itself because you have somebody reading it in a voice. And that could be a way better experience than you reading it in your own internal monologue. Um, but I don't think it's reading. But I also think that that doesn't mean it's worse. They're basically the same way to get the same information. But you're <laughs> listening to something. You're not reading anything. Okay, okay, okay. How about this, right? What if I watch an audiobook on YouTube but read the closed captions of the audiobook. Mm. Is that reading a book? Or is that reading an audiobook? I don't know. <laughs> you know, Tom Henderson has an interesting quote. He says that the problem is that Sony stuff paid for the development of extra content in games like the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remaster. So... Sony, with their deals, was able to get more content and basically saying that Modern Warfare 2 campaign remaster wouldn't have existed without Sony's investment into the Call of Duty exclusivity stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, what Tom doesn't understand is nobody oh. cares about Call of Duty. This is all about StarCraft 3, man. For you. We, are, we don't care about no Call of Duty. This is all about saving Heroes of the Storm, getting StarCraft 3... You know, getting StarCraft 1 and 2 on Xbox, that's what it's about, man. It's not about Call of Duty. No one cares about Call of Duty. Who even plays Call of Duty these days? More, pe the more people played? that will ever play... <laughs> um, more people that will ever play uh, StarCraft 3. Bro, StarCraft is a national sport in yeah, South Korea. in South Korea. So no it's such cares a, it's such a when, Call of Duty is not a national sport when was, in, Enlighten me when the last time it was a StarCraft game. What what year did StarCraft two come out? What what year was that? Um, StarCraft Eternal, man. Doesn't matter. What what, what, Doesn't what matter. year? What year? How, how long has it been? I don't know, man. Yeah, it's the longest time. Yeah, I think exactly. It was like Ten years ago or something. <laughs> it's so when did StarCraft two even come out. It's like twenty twelve. It's so man. relevant. They haven't done one in 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 almost a decade. Yes. It's yeah. Well, it's, also, Bobby mm. Kotick didn't probably want them to do a StarCraft, so there is that. Cause they want they want things that make <sighs> moolah jazz and StarCraft don't make moolah. StarCraft is art, man. It's art. Uh, Phil, Phil, will bring it back. He said it. Phil said it. He bring it back. I wouldn't. So, I wouldn't be surprised if it's in development right now. As is, I wouldn't be surprised if there's multiple StarCraft games in development. I doubt it. No. Oh. No, I feel. I feel like I'd know. Oh, you feel like you know if there was? Like somebody would tell you? Mm hmm Interesting. Uh, Sleepy Goblin says, member for 23 months says, Rand, read the Jim Butcher novels. Your time is now. I actually started Dresden. Uh, I read two books uh, while waiting uh, for uh, the, the, at the vets. So I actually, I, I, I think I have 10 of the Dresden files. Because I was going to read those. So I read the first two. And I'm going to be reading two of those books a month. Uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Set in Chicago. Um, it's a very, very fast read. Fizz, Frizzle says, Do you ever need to reread the same line multiple times before you can remember what you just read? 
No, normally I can remember everything after reading it once. It's only when I'm thinking of something else or there's something else going on around me that sometimes I might have to reread a paragraph. Or if something truly crazy just happened, I need to reread it to make sure that what I just read actually happened. But normally I can just read just read it once and just retain the knowledge. I'm, I've always been pretty good at that. Um... Uh, let's see what else we got. We have uh, Raiden Blade member for 21 months says, "Is Forspoken still on track to release on Xbox as it was set to release one year after the PS5? What do you think?" Also, COD been a PLC in UK but not on Game Pass. Well, Forspoken, according to Square Enix, has lackluster sales, surprising nobody, because <laughs> the the game didn't look good, it didn't review well, and it was only released on PlayStation 5 and PC. So hopefully. Hopefully it was square. Hopefully it was worth that money that Sony paid you. You know, we'll probably never see a Forspoken two. I don't even know if that game was set up to be um, a franchise. But you know what? No, I don't think. I don't think we will. I don't think. I don't think we'll see Forspoken on Xbox. It's a two year exclusive, I believe. And if it doesn't do well, which is seemingly like it hasn't, I've seen pictures of Forspoken. The like there have been pictures circling in it of like the game and and trash bins at GameStops or whatever. That I mean, it's probably yeah. I don't I don't see why they would even bother porting an Xbox when they probably don't have any future plans for the franchise. It's yeah, not- Forspoken is dead and dead, and I don't think you'll ever see it on Xbox. That yeah. is so dead. I mean, the the Forspoken's on UWP. <clears throat> this is the weirdest thing about Forspoken, man. Like they ported that shit to the Microsoft Store. Like, why? Like, what? What is? What is Square Enix thinking? You know, they don't put the game on Xbox where people are actually playing games, but they put it on the Microsoft Store where literally nobody buys games. The only reason the Microsoft Store exists is because it, it's it's the delivery mechanism for PC Game Pass. Literally nobody buys games on the Microsoft Store. Square Enix just, it's just so confusing it's like it's like the people running that company just don't know anything it's just so weird man so weird yeah i mean you've always uh said that you actually kind of hope that sony buys square enix because maybe they can turn them around right i think so i think sony would be a great fit for square enix i think i think like yeah i would be i would i would love to see any platform holder nintendo as well Nintendo or Sony, not Microsoft, because, you know, Monopoly. But <laughs> I, I think, like, Nintendo or Sony could give Square Enix that kind of managerial structure that they clearly don't have right now. The fact that they're still talking about NFTs while, they're, while their games are bombing on Metacritic left, right, and center just says to me they're a company without direction, you know? Shit company, basically. Jeez. Tell them, tell them how you really think. Well, dude, like the, the only reason that Square Enix has anything going for it is because they have a few game directors who are absolutely brilliant. You know, like Yoshi P, for example. Like Final Fantasy XIV, Realm Reborn, and Final Fantasy XVI looks really good as well. There's like, there's, like a, there's like a few glimmers of hope within Square Enix that are literally carrying the whole company on its back. But the people running the show... The people who keep crying about NFTs and stuff, they ain't got a fucking clue. They ain't got a clue. I just got ranted monetized. But yeah, they ain't got a clue, you know. So I think, like, if they join Sony or Nintendo and you get rid of that stupid NFT thinking executive layer who clearly doesn't have a clue, what you're left with is, like, a really good studio with great franchises that deserve a lot better than they're getting, you know. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simco says, member for 32 months says, I just listen to audio books at 1.8 to two times the speed. Don't have time for my mind to wander. I mean, uh, that is a thing. I know some people watch YouTube videos like that. So they just, it's like turning on really fast, but, um, yeah, let's, let's move on. So talk about the game. I'm still playing jazz. Uh, been playing Wolong Fallen Dynasty. I'm basically done. I am 27 hours into the game. And I have like two main missions left. Um, I'm like level 100 right now. And I will say I was enjoying the game a lot more in the middle 
Uh, I'm basically at the point now at the game where I kind of just want it to be over. It's it's starting to get a little too samey. And it is basically, in my opinion, the easiest Souls game I, I've ever played. Um, outside what of is? this game. Wolong. Uh, Wol- Wolong Fallen Dynasty, yeah. Easy? Hmm. E- easiest Soul game I've ever played. And, and what I mean by that is... Uh, Easier than Dark Souls Remastered? What? I mean, Dark Souls the original? The easiest from the ones I played and the ones I played being Wolong... Sekiro, Bloodborne, Elden Ring. Oh, you never played Dark Souls? I mean, I played Dark Souls, but in co-op, so not like the true experience. So, yeah, Wolong, like, outside of three bosses, I beat every single boss the first try. Um, mm. So, it's good. I don't think it's great. I mean, I have enjoyed myself for most of the time, but right now where I'm at, I'm kind of like, all right, I want this to be over. Uh, they reuse the map quite a bit because you have like the main missions or the main battlefields and then you can travel to sub battlefields and they'll take the map that you just went through and they're like coordinate off where you just kind of do a small thing or you just do an extra fight or maybe they turn the time of day oh. so they kind of reuse some of that stuff to make the game a little bit longer so they have like extra missions to do but yeah the, the first boss is the hardest not the first boss. Yeah, the first boss was the hardest in my opinion. I spent like forty minutes on it. If you look at the Xbox achievements, only a third of the people who've played the game have actually beat the first boss, which is kind of insane. Uh, so like, two thirds of the people are like, nah, not even gonna bother. Delete the game. The Lubu well, fight. That's Game Pass for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this Game Pass. You can load it up on the cloud. You can play it for X amount of time, decide if it's worth it or not, and basically delete it or what have you, right? Um, the Lubu. You don't even need to download it these days. You can just stream it from the cloud. Yeah, the Lubu fight that everybody complains about initially was pretty difficult, but once you kind of realize that you need to play it differently than most. Because normally, I'm very aggressive. Like, I'm in there attacking constantly, getting my deflex off, using my magic, spamming, and just just in there destroying destroying the enemies right away. Uh, this one, though, you kind of were penalized for doing that. Uh, he starts on a horse, and basically you had to block all of his regular attacks and then parry his critical red attacks and just constantly do that. And once I changed how I played, I beat that boss like two times like two tries later it was just i yeah, you remember i remember me remember me saying that my brother one shot the first boss yeah but then he got to lubu and had the same issues that you had yeah and <laughs> Lu, lubu has like so much more health than other bosses so it does take a lot like you'd be constantly having to to parry at the right moments and if you screw up a parry you're, you're gonna pay for it right so it is more of like a battle of attrition but it was it was a boss i had to play completely differently than normal but other than that like all the rest of the bosses have been really easy some of them are really cool looking some of them aren't some of the levels are really cool some kind of aren't mm-hmm. um and like the combat itself isn't there's not much to it i mean you, you talk about hellblade not really having a lot of combat but like wolong's combat is just they have like a like a four hit light attack string that never changes and then like one heavy attack on y and then some martial arts on like our right bumper and x and y and yeah there's like a bunch of different weapons you can use but like there's really no combos you can do it's just the same four attack light combo on x and then a heavy attack on y so it really does seem a, a tad bit simplified um but I mean, you know, it's. It, I think it's. I enjoyed it more than Atomic Heart. Um, but yeah, it was like, it, it still does feel really good to parry enemies. Even now, when I'm fighting, and they come and attack you, and I parry perfectly, and and you hear the sound, and you kind of like, do a, like a spin in a circle. It it still really feels good, even thirty hours later. So they nailed that aspect. It's just kind of like, I wish the combat was a little bit more involved. You have more combos. Maybe like less number of 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 weapons and like more focus on different combo strings uh, rather than like what they currently have. And I, I, you know, and I'm fine with like the whole 
morale system where, you know, like if you're level one, morale one going up against the enemy versus like if you're 20, you basically take twice as much damage and then deal twice as much damage. So like you constantly, so even though you like right now, this mission I'm doing is like recommended level 80, but I'm like level 100 or something. So I'm a little, maybe you can say I'm a little bit over leveled. It kind of gives you this thing where like the morale system in the level kind of doesn't let you really scale past it. Like you should be able to, because it's like the enemy is still going to hit you really hard in the beginning um, until then you like level up your morale and then you're just like God essentially. And in in that's part, but yeah, you know, that's kind of my experience with Lo Wo Long. Oh. Um, I would, I would ask you what you're playing, but you can't really talk about it. Right. Yeah. I can't talk about it. I mean, I've played a bit of overwatch too, you know, they've got a one punch man battle pass at the mm. moment. So it's interesting. And, uh, you know, I've been playing some WoW. I've been playing some Heroes of Storm. Basically, all the Blizzard games. Can you tell I like Blizzard, by the way? Yes, you love Blizzard. That's why you want this thing to go through. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. But, yeah, the the, ma- the major game I can't talk about. But I will... Will I be able to talk about it next week? Yeah, I think on next week's show I can talk about it. So we'll talk about it next week. But you guys can probably work out what it is. Um... And uh, it's pretty damn awesome. Oh, the other thing I really don't like about Wolong is the loot system. They just constantly throw trash loot at you all the time. Like, once you have a set of armor that you like and a weapon that you like and you're going to focus on upgrading that stuff, you just constantly just get worthless loot consistently. And it sort of, like, ruins the idea of going around and looting everything because it's like, oh, you have, like, I have, like, a sword that's level 4 you know, like the rarity of it. And like, it's upgraded to the the highest level. Same thing with my armor. Right. But like you go around and I, but I'm getting drops of like level one armor or level two armor or level three, but it's like, I'm never going to use this is constantly just throwing junk at you all the time and sort of makes it all just meaningless. And then you basically just have to salvage it anyways. There's a reason why the game gives you like 500 slots of a gear that you can hold because they just, it just constantly throws stuff at you to make it all just feel uh, like basically pointless. But anyways, that's my thing with Wolong. Uh, dead planet says, what's the one rare item in your game collection, Jez? You got a rare uh, item in the game collection? Hmm. I've got, I got a lot of PS one games that are, that are quite rare now, like uh, legend of Dragoon physical copy stuff like, um, you know, son, even Steve stuff like Sonic one and Metal Gear solid one, a lot of them in pristine condition as well. A lot of them are pretty rare and, you know, worth a bit of money, you know? So I do have some quite rare stuff. I suppose a lot of people always ask me about my Xbox live neon sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is, which is quite rare. They they gave those to press for the 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 original Xbox. I got mine off of eBay uh, from Italy, imported it, but sadly it's broke. It won't turn on anymore. And I don't know why. If anyone if anyone listens to this show knows how to repair neon signs, that'd be that'd be cool. But um, but yeah, that's probably my rarest thing is the Xbox Live neon sign. It's pretty awesome. I don't. What re- about you, Ren? I don't really have. I don't really have anything like that. No. Mm. Like I mean, all my games, like I said, for this gen are all digital. I don't have any physical game stuff, and I'm not. Yeah, I've I've never been one to like buy physical games or get like statues for them. Like for you buy the most expensive version, or have any of that stuff really. So yeah, like I don't really have anything I would consider rare as part of a game collection. Yeah. But I never really cared to, honestly. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I had like loads of 360 games, and I, I just, I just gave them all to a charity shop and just went digital at some point. I kept my PS1 games because I don't know, just way more sentiment for that, for that stuff. Like, um, Pony Trash in the chat just said uh, that he has uh, Parasite Eve two on the PS1. For and he spent one hundred and fifty five dollars on it. I've got Parasite Eve two as well. 
You ever play Parasite Eve 2, Rad? No, oh, I God. have not. I have not. My God, that game is absolute banger. Absolute banger. Um, really good game. Um, I'm really confused why they never made a new Parasite Eve. But I don't know. Uh, Soul Reaper Ever's question. Hey, guys, don't know if you have talked about it yet, but have either of you played the RE4 demo yet? After playing it, I really can't wait for my favorite re5 to hopefully be remade uh no i know they announced the demo yesterday after the capcom spotlight thing but i don't really play demos especially for a game that i'm already going to play like i'm done i'm day one on resident evil 4 i don't need to play a demo Oops. so I, I just don't play demos that's my thing uh, maybe maybe like a beta like if they came out with the redfall beta i would maybe try that out or like if the finals, that big shooter that's going around, if they had like a beta on Xbox, I'd try that out. But usually for games that I'm really interested in, that I know I'm going to play, I don't I don't really play the demos. I, I didn't play any of the demos for Wolong, Fallen Dynasty. I just, it's not something I really do. Uh, mainly because I don't need to be sold on Resident Evil 4. I'm getting it. I'm getting yeah. it. Tom says that he's looking forward to Dead Island previews next week. Oh, that'd be interesting interesting, because hopefully that's uh, that's really good. He also says, Jez, have you played the demo? I don't know if he means the demo for Dead Island 2 or the demo for RE4. I have not played Dead Island 2, and I have not played Resident Evil 4 demo. (laughs) Yeah, but do you even need to play the Resident Evil 4 demos? The question... Do I even need to? Do you even need to? Did you play the original well you know i love resident evil yes you know, it's one of my favorite franchises did you play the original resident evil 4 on the gamecube yes that's the reason i bought the gamecube i bought the gamecube because they had resident evil exclusivity and yes i played resident evil 4 on the gamecube and it's one of my favorite games ever i got a gamecube for metal Gear solid twin snakes oh yeah snake. i did play that too but um i as a kid i actually felt betrayed by resident evil 4 betrayed yeah i was like this isn't this is not my resident evil oh no i was like i i was triggered by it man i was triggered by it i was like what the hell is this this isn't resident evil that zombie's carrying a carrying a stick that's not a zombie i was really confused by it i was like 12 or something or 11 or 12 i don't know 13 maybe you're like you're like 50 now though so yeah but uh times have changed so i suppose for me it's kind of like giving resident evil 4 another another go because I, I actually got really into resident evil 5 i, I don't i don't like um I, <laughs> it's funny right because like resident evil 5 was really irritated me in the sense that it just wasn't a resident evil game i was like what what the hell is this it's just action 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 you know this is resident evil gears of war you know but h- hilariously i probably put more hours into resident evil 5 than i have any other resident evil because me and my brother were playing it together so much you know <laughs> you know because it, it was co-op and there was like there's there's a lot of reasons to replay it through you know you know to get all the extra weapons and you know all that kind of stuff so oh man um but yeah, Resident Evil 4 like is controversial in my mind, so I'm I'm intrigued to see how I'll feel about it through aged eyes. Mm. Christopher yeah, for- Christopher wants to know if you saw Jez uh Pactor's interview on Dustin's channel today. I did not, but I will check it out later. Yeah, it says it's gonna really gonna hurt Sony. That might be that might be some good articles, you know, you could you could write off about Damn. that. Damn. Damn. But um you know what? Let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about the big news. Let's talk about Starfield, shall we? Let's talk about that. Starfield. Starfield. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button, please. Subscribe if you're new. Be greatly greatly appreciated. Love you all. Uh, let's talk about one of the big things that happened this week, and that is, well, Jez, can you just I guess maybe do a victory lap? People were doubting your contacts, bro. People were doubting that your inside information <laughs> about. About there being a, an announcement of the Starfield Direct soon, remember? Because we thought it was going to be last week because we were hearing that there was some announcement coming about the Starfield Direct. Although, to be f- perfectly fair, I didn't expect this, 
right? People were telling me that the announcement for the direct is coming really soon. And it clearly must have been this, but I, I, there seemed to, like, at least the people I talked to, there seemed to be, nobody knew, like, the release date was also going to come. So they had probably just heard the direct was coming. So, yeah, I mean, you, you were taking some slander, Jazz, I saw you. You were taking some slander. Yeah, I mean, we joked about it, didn't we, last week? Because it, um, it was Andy at VGC who first said there was a Starfield Direct announcement coming up. And I DM'd you and I was like, yeah, I heard that too, I think, or something. I can't remember the exact order of events. But um, it was just like, well, if I've heard it, Andy's heard it from his sources... And then probably you'd heard it as well from someone else, if I remember correctly. I heard it from like two people, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, well, this is probably happening, isn't it? You know. But like I say, I only put reports up on Windows Central if I've gotten something physical, like a physical piece of evidence, because I'm just risk averse, you know. I just I'm just risk averse. I don't want to put something out there unless I'm hundred percent certain on Windows Central. <laughs> you know, which is read by millions of people every month, you know, but when we're just discussing things on a podcast, it's more like discussing things with friends, you know, you guys, you guys are our friends. You're my friend Rand. you know, discussing rumors a little bit, that are maybe a little bit more vague, you know, on the show. And, and then the week passed and then there was no, there was no announcement. So it's like, oh, well, maybe it got delayed. But I was still pretty sure it was imminent based on who told me this stuff. Because this, you know, these sources are pretty much rock solid, you know. So I was like, well, if it ain't last week, it probably is this week or the week after or something like that, you know. I kind of had it down, like, definitely for, for March at least. But, um, but yeah, came through. Not only did we get an announcement of the Starfield Direct date, which, to be honest, I didn't expect it in June. No, I, I mean, was it I mean, I was expecting. I mean, I'll be honest. I was expecting the Starfield Direct this month. I mean, I had predicted yeah. March fifteenth. I thought I'd it was... only heard of an announcement. I didn't yeah. know whether the I heard itself like the only thing, June, but I was expecting it sooner than that, though, for sure. The only thing I had heard was that there was an announcement about the direct coming. Uh, and, and I felt like, oh, well, then th that must mean that, cause I also, you know, like I was just like, oh, that must mean the, the direct is coming soon. Cause I was like, they're not yeah. going to announce the direct for, you know, months away. Right. Like why they're not going to be like, oh, you know, the direct is, is coming in five months or whatever. Like I was like, oh, if they're announcing the direct, that means it's coming soon. At least that was my line of thought. Uh, yeah. but I did not have on my bingo card and them announcing the direct for three months from now. Right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have that down either. But um. But in any case, I um. The other thing, the other aspect of this was, you owe me ten dollars, Rand. Yeah, yeah. You owe me ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. You'll get. You'll get your ten dollars. You yeah. Get... I mean, it's uh, it's weird because <laughs> I'd gone back and forth. On you you due. have gone so did, yeah. far back and forth. I was. With, I, with I, this. I, I was. It's fu it's funny, right? Because I said it wasn't going to make June based on nothing. Uh -huh. That was just pure pessimism. But then I'd I'd gotten like you know vague whispers and hints here and there that's like yeah it's close to being finished or whatever. So I was like yeah maybe Rand's right maybe it is June you know and it but no my pessimism came through for me Rand. Well I always I I always months. said that June at the earliest because even even at some point like we i had said that like i i sort of felt it was second half of the year september october time frame like we wouldn't have been we we constantly said i wouldn't be surprised if it was like that point but it was like june at the earliest but maybe most likely second second half of the year like september but yeah so you know if you're living under a rock the big announcement is they not only announced the new release date of starfield out of nowhere in a trailer uh, we got to see Todd Howard again, got to see some new gameplay, which looks a lot better. Got to see some off-screen gameplay. Um, and the, the new release date is September 6th, which I think is a pretty damn good, good date. Because I've, I always thought 
when I when people were telling me like Starfield's targeting summer, with potentially coming in June, but it's like summer is like j- late June, July, August, September, and to me, if you're targeting summer and you have a game like Starfield, it doesn't make any sense to release in July or August. So to me, it was either June or September, and clearly, you know, September was the choice in this case. So we have the new release date. We have all the drama that goes along with that, right? Um, which we will talk about because, I mean, geez, there's there's a lot there to unpack. But we also got the announcement of the Starfield Direct. You know, Todd said, it doesn't sound like that's going to be a live thing because it sounded like Todd's like, you're going to like, you know, come into the studio and they're going to explain a lot of the stuff. But the interesting thing is that the Starfield Direct is coming on June 11th. And when I first saw that, because I was actually on the... F- so, Cody Eastwood, our buddy, got to go out to L.A. to play Redfall this week. Super jealous, you know. And I always say Randall, Randall chop liver, because where was Rand's invite? Must have got lost in the mail. Must have been in my spam <laughs> folder, right? It was like, nobody cares about Rand. Nobody cares about uh... Rand, right? So, I'm literally on the phone with Colt. Colt's like waiting... Uh, he called me up. He's, he's like waiting for his flight to go back home and we're just talking about stuff. And then nine o'clock hit. And I usually, usually Xbox will make announcements at like 8 a.m. My time, nine o'clock, 9 a.m. My time. And I was expecting the Starfield announcement that day. Cause I thought they were going to announce it for next week. And then I was going to get on Twitter and be like, Hey, remember when I predicted March 15th, just call me Ranstradamus. Right. Uh, and then I, I looked on Twitter as I'm talking to Colt. And it's like, I saw Wario64's tweet about Starfield being delayed to September 6th. And I'm like, what? And then I saw, what? I watched the trailer. I'm like, Colt. He's like, what? I'm like, they just they just announced the release date of Starfield. He's like, no freaking way. What? I'm like, yeah. He's like, when is it? I'm like, September 6th. And I started watching the video. I'm like, bro, they also announced the Starfield Direct. And he's like, when's that? I'm like, June 11th. And we're like, June 11th? That's the same day as at least we were expecting the Xbox game showcase. And it was like, wait a minute, is the Xbox game showcase not on June, not on June 11th? Like what's going on here? Is that, is it during Xbox's show? And I was like, I don't want that. But then Xbox clarified later uh, in a tweet that uh, directly after it sounds like the Xbox game showcase uh, they will have a Starfield Direct. So we're going to be feasting that day, Jez, because we're probably going to get your typical... Well, maybe not necessarily typical, because what most mostly we, we have lately is a, a digital Direct where Microsoft pre-records things, but I would hazard to I would hazard to guess that Microsoft's actually going to have a live show this year, yes? With fans in the audience and stuff like that? You think... You think you no, think, actually. You, you don't think so? Oh, Because okay. literally eight minutes ago... Tom Warren put out an article saying that no, Microsoft's not going to have any physical presence at E3. Yeah, but I mean, they, phys- physical nope. presence at E3 doesn't mean they couldn't have a, their show at the Microsoft Theater. No, nope. it sounds like no, it sounds like they're just going to be pre-recorded, bro. Bro, that does, dude. You know, because it's funny because everybody I talk to in the community is like, got my flight booked, got my hotel book, I'm going to the Xbox show because it's going to be live and in person, and you're a fool if you miss it. I'm getting a lot, a lot of people are like badgering me. Like, like I'm back in high school and I'm, they're, they're, they're peer pressuring me to smoke. Like, just have the cigarette, Rand. Just, just drag on it. You want to be cool, right? But in this case, it's like, just be cool, Rand. You want to go to, you know, you want to go to LA, right? You want to be one of the cool kids. And I'm just like, maybe, you know, I'm trying to lose a lot of weight, you know, like I'm doing really well. I'm like, almost 80 pounds lost or whatever. Like, I don't know if I'm in shape. I want to, you know, but you're like, do it, Rand. Come on. If you don't, you know, like I'm, so I'm getting peer pressure. I'm getting peer pressure from cold Eastwood, from gas, from Tim dog. Cause I, I talked to Tim yesterday from cognito. They're all pressuring me to go to E3. Yeah. You were pressuring me to go to E3 just the other day when we talked. You're yeah. Like, you know, everybody's pressuring me to go. And I'm just like, you know what? Uh, we'll see. But I think, I think, I, I mean, based on what happened with um, what happened with uh, Gamescom last year, it was the first Gamescom 
after the pandemic or well it was still during the pandemic really but um it was sort of it was sort of like people were still nervous about the pandemic and it was kind of like publishers hadn't sort of decided if they were gonna commit marketing budget to it again gamescom last year was a very different show there was very there was much less to it there was much less presence there it felt like a much it felt like a stunted show and i think e3 is going to go through the same weird growing pain again as well like gamescom did last year where publishers are like yeah do we really want to do this i think next year's e3 might be a little bit more normal but i still think this year's e3 is probably just it's going to be lame so it does like so th- this isn't a rumor or anything this is a statement that microsoft put well, out can you read the there. statement i want to i want to hear the it statement says, we can't wait to host our xbox games showcase on june 11th and we'll share more details on that later we also look forward to co-streaming our event as part of e3 digital but we will not be on the e3 show floor I mean, that doesn't say that their show won't be live, though, with fans and journalists in attendance. That just means they won't be at the show floor. I don't know, bro. I'm just saying there'd be a lot of disappointed people if everybody's everybody's thinking they're going to E3 to to, to, to see an Xbox show and and there is no Xbox show and it's just a watch along again, you know? Mm. But. Yeah. Either way, the big news was that the Starfield Direct is going to be coming on after the Xbox Game Showcase. So you might get your typical hour and a half show, uh, you know, new announcements, maybe first looks at, you know, gameplay or second look at like Hellblade 2, Avowed, you know, I don't know what else. I don't know if Perfect Dark will be there, brand new games, indie games that are coming to Game Pass, you know, Bethesda games and all that sort of stuff. And then you'll probably have like a 30-minute, 40-minute Starfield Direct. So that's going to be a very, very big day. Um, I guess then we need to come to the elephant in the room, and I'll let you lead off on this one. Oh, no. Go on, then. Uh, uh, about, uh, you know, the, uh, the idea of like, one, are you good with the, de- uh, 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 with the delay of the new release date? Two, do you consider it a delay? And I guess everybody kind of talks about the idea here that, uh, you know, did, did micro is this, was this something that Microsoft promised? Did they lie? You know, like all the stuff that's going around on social media uh, about this whole Starfield situation, because, you know, you're pretty invested in this. I think you've been on record multiple times that you want the game delayed as long as possible because it needs to be perfect. So what, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, you know, I based on what I've said in previous podcasts, I am bothered at all about the delay. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, I welcome this delay welcome because it dropped okay. at the same time as Diablo Four. Otherwise, yeah, that's if it true. was dropping in June, I'd be screwed because I really want to play Starfield, but I really, really want to play Diablo Four. So it's kind of like, you know, honestly, I think Starfield would have lost out. You know, so I wouldn't be playing Starfield that month. I would have been playing Diablo, and however long, you know. Diablo's gonna, season's going to last for, you know. So I am super happy, personally speaking, that it's delayed. Um, but I did see a lot of disappointment on social media about it being delayed. And it is a delay. Let's, you know, Starfield didn't have a launch date offered, but it is a delay because Microsoft said every game at our show last year will be playable in the next 12 months. Part of me wonders if, Bethesda signed off on that. Mm. If it was Bethesda, was, was Bethesda like, wait, they really think we're going to get this out in 12 months? But I was told by, you know, people in the know, you know, I was told that there was no, there was no mandate really for Starfield to, you know, appear in that next 12 months. And that the priority, the priority for Starfield was polish, polish, polish. And it wasn't hitting a specific deadline. Okay, so clearly they've just decided we we want this to be as polished as possible. We want we want to shed the you know the the meme that Bethesda launches buggy bug games, especially in this environment we have right now, where it's like everything seems to launch broken these days, especially on PC. You know, PC is like 
it's become a whole meme this quarter on PC where game after game after game is releasing buggy and unoptimized and unfinished and unready to go, you know. So I think like there's there's a greater sensitivity to that now than perhaps there might have been in previous years, months. I really think AAA publishers are really starting to take the piss when it comes to we'll release it now and then patch it later. And I don't think like you know it's going it'd be a good look for Microsoft if they, if they did that. Um, Hi-Fi Rush was pretty amazingly well polished at launch, and I kind of think that's what they want to start working towards putting out there. You know, um, obviously Microsoft hasn't always achieved that. You know, notoriously Master Chief Collection was a mess when it launched, and you know other games like that. But hopefully, you know, they've got this anti-crunch culture going on or whatever, you know, rather than rushing out the door, they'll give games the time it needs to actually be as good as it can be so they can have, you know, the the warmest possible launch reception. So, yeah, I'm fine with it being delayed. However, Rand, they can't ever use that line again. These games will be playable in the next 12 months because nobody's going to believe them. Mm. Like, <laughs> you know, for... <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, you know. But Jez, didn't you know they didn't promise anything? They had an asterisk at the end of the show on the card. It says games are targeting 12 months. That does that's not a contract written in blood, Jez. Bro, I I literally never saw that. Mm. I never I never noticed that asterisk. Was that was that actually there? Yes, it was actually there. It was actually they they had this graphic <laughs> of all the games coming in the next 12 months and in the right-hand oh, corner on. and in the that right-hand corner right. there there was an asterisk that says games targeting to release in the next 12 months. That lets them off the hook, Jez. Didn't you know? That lets them off the hook. Uh, well, first of all, I screwed up that idiom. And second of all, <laughs> you did. Yeah, I, yeah, I got the I got the idiom completely backwards. But second of all, um, no, you can't you can't you can't literally b- b- wheel out the small print in your marketing <laughs> event. You can't do that. That's why I I never even knew that. I never even saw that shit, man. Mm. But yeah, I I don't know. I think that I just think they shouldn't have said that. I think they should have just you know, bitten the bullet and just being like, yeah, we don't know when these games are coming, but, you know, <laughs> we don't know when these games are coming, but we'll be, we'll be honest about it. There might be here in the next 12 months that might be more like the next 18 months, you know, but, um, they can't use that 12 month line again, simply put. Yeah. But it is what it is. Then the there. So I made a video about it on the day it happened. Right, because I was like, "Oh, damn, Starfield looking good." One of my most anticipated games. You know, I'm very much on record saying I don't really care for Fallout, but I do love me Elder Scrolls. But I'm a big sci-fi nut, sci-fi movies, sci-fi books, love them. So I'm like, yeah, like a, from the people who made Skyrim, sc- sci-fi game, absolutely, I will be there day one. But I mean, let's be honest, when they showed it last year, it looked kind of rough. It definitely wasn't hitting yeah. no 30, it, it was barely hitting 30 frames, right? It was just like, you know, you're like, uh, a lot of optimization left to go. And it's funny because last year before E3, before their showcase, we were part of like the press thing and Todd Howard had said they're putting the fi- final touches on the game. This was June of last year. Um, mm. And it's like, okay, the game's now coming out September of the following year. So it definitely seemed like the game needed a lot of work. Now, I don't really get upset too much about delays because I do believe the delays will help a game out. Now, sometimes maybe there's no helping a game, right? Like you look at Suicide Squad and how the negative reaction to the fan backlash about Suicide Squad, which by the way, shout out to you, Jez. Take another victory lap, shall you? Just just, oh. just take, take another one. Because uh, yeah, I think you put it out there that you were hearing Suicide Squad was getting delayed. Yes. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You put it out there on Twitter, and 15 minutes later, Jason Schreier delayed the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, no, no official uh... announcement for Mortar Brothers, but 
I mean, dude, I I emailed Warner Brothers about that. They didn't even reply. <laughs> the, so the thing with Suicide Squad is like you have the backlash of what fans wanted and what they're showing, like. Suicide Squad, but it looks like Crackdown 4, and it's a live service game with Battle Pass, and it's sort of like, man, on the heels of the event, like, it certainly seems like a game that nobody really wants, right? And because of the fan backlash, at least like, like kind of what Jason Schreier was saying, they're delaying that game, presumably to the end of the year. Um, but J- Jeff Grubb said in the show yesterday that he's hearing it could be delayed all the way to 2024 at some point. Yeah, so I heard um I heard vaguely quarter four, but yeah, that could be fiscal year yeah, quarter four. That could which be is and it's twenty twenty four. But it's know. like in this case it's it's sort of like Starfield n- needed a delay for polish. Right? It's like mm. you 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 know, they're not called Bug Thesda for a reason. Like a lot of their games on on un- unpolished, a lot of game have bugs and all these issues that then the modders essentially fix. And we both agree that you can't have that with this release. No, All eyes are going to be on a Xbox. Lot of, a lot is riding on this. Yes, a lot is riding on this. Biggest new release from Xbox in quite some time. It needed to be as perfect as possible. So take your time. You know, you delayed the game once already because it wasn't in a condition you wanted to put it out. At that point, just uh, tell us when it's going to come the next time. And whatever, like, I'm perfectly happy with it. Like, I'm perfectly happy with the Suicide Squad delay. But the difference between the two, it's like, I think what people don't like about Suicide Squad isn't going to be fixed, right? That the whole live service games as a service stuff that Warner Brother tends to do, I'm not necessarily sure they can rip that, rip that out from that game. And because that game's, that game's, you know, like, uh, Ark, uh, I'm trying, I'm just, uh, the, the, the name of the studio, uh, Rocksteady, it's like, they haven't released a game in eight years. And it could be nine yeah. years because their Arkham Knight was 2015. This game was supposed to come out. Th- so that'd be eight years in between games. What have they been doing? And now the fan backlash is so big that they got to push the game. And what for more polish? Or are they just basically kicking the kicking the ball down the road because it's like, oh damn, like this game could just totally bomb. Whereas like people want Starfield. People seem to like really like what they've seen of Starfield. They're just worried about how it's going to perform. You know, we've had conversations about will the game be 30 frames on series X and only 30 frames, or will it have a performance mode and run a 60? Cause we have both talked about the world's most powerful console, the Xbox series X that nobody can really buy uh, for whatever reason. doesn't seem to be in three years into this, this whole gen and Xbox is still having stock issues with their console. Um, you can't even can't get the series X and it's like, nope. A lot of the games recently, have, you know, Xbox has some wins there from Digital Foundry, but sometimes their PlayStation's got the wins or whatever. If you follow on that stuff, um, and it's like, is the world's most powerful console going to run Starfield at thirty frames? A lot of people are like, that's an L if that does. If Starfield comes out at thirty, that's an L. But then a lot of the footage in this thing may seem like really, really good, and maybe, maybe they partially delayed it to add a performance mode, which would be perfect. So, like, because in my video, people were like, oh, Rand's mad that it's delayed. Like, absolutely not. I am not mad that it's it's delayed, right, at all. Like, take all the time you need to make the game as good as you possibly can release it. I'm 100% for that. There's plenty of other games to play, whether it's brand new releases or stuff in Game Pass. Like, I got plenty of stuff to play, plenty of stuff to watch, plenty of stuff yeah, to I, read, right? I'm perfectly... don't bother me at all. Yeah, I'm perfect- I, don't, I don't know if it's my age or, or if it's just the fact that I don't I don't have as much time to play. But I have my backlog is endless. Like delay yeah. everything for all I can. <laughs> delay everything. You know. <laughs> so I got time to catch the, up. The the issue I had, well, technically, you know, they they need to hit the state first and foremost. Like, if they delay it again, if they come out and say, oh, by the way, we need to delay this to 2024, then people might be like, what the up? What what the f is going on? If you, if you have to delay the game once more, right? My issue was basically the same as yours in the sense that people, because this, this whole thing creates narratives, right? It isn't, you, you see it from a lot of YouTubers 
You see it from a lot of the media. And even with me, when I was trying to determine what does the title of this podcast be? Do I, have, do I put Starfield release date or Starfield delay? Right? And I went with maybe the more favorable one with Starfield release date. Because Starfield delay, you know, a lot, a lot of people get upset at that or whatever. Because in my opinion, yeah, it is a delay. They, and it's not really a delay on Bethesda's side. It's really a delay because Xbox said, hey, those games, you're playing them by June of next year, end of June next year. Pinky promise, swear, you know, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't happen. So to me, it was like, well, yeah, I mean, that's a delay. Even if Starfield wasn't really targeting to make that point, Xbox essentially set the expectation that you would have it. And that's sometimes the problems with all this is the expectations that are created, which then Mm -hmm. turn into perceptions. So now, instead of people just announcing, hey, Starfield has a new release date. Guess what? Look at it. September 6th. Can't you wait to play it? People lead with Starfield delayed again. What is wrong with Xbox and Bethesda? And that seems to be a common theme. And then you even got people like, you know, really excited for Beth- you know, Starfield, happy with the delay, release it whenever. But this really questions Microsoft's ability to hit targeted release dates or, you know, nail their promises, quote unquote. So this becomes a whole issue because Microsoft wanted to be cute with their PR <laughs> last year. They wanted to be cute <laughs> when they cute. had nothing. Yeah, dude, this was this is entirely because they wanted a cute PR victory about the idea. Because, I mean, let's be honest. There is something very... Um, cute. Not cute. I'll use a different word. But there is something... It is Erotic. it is a good PR beat to say oh. everything you see, you can play in the next okay. year between our, between our showcases. Look what we have on offer because most showcases are showing you things years away. So for the first time ever, look at all this content. And guess what? All this content is also free on Game Pass. Isn't that amazing? Right. And to me, that was just a cute way for Xbox to turn what was a PR nightmare about the idea of delaying Starfield and Redfall from 2022 and not having anything else into a nice PR win, a talking point where it's like, oh my God, look at all this content. Isn't this amazing? Isn't Game Pass the best value in gaming? Look at all this great, amazing content. triple a content indie content that i can play for just ten dollars a month right and if you look at everything they promised a lot of it's hit a lot of it will release in those 12 months but when it comes to xbox first party the only two that are actually releasing are redfall and minecraft legends forza motorsport starfield and our history untold won't make it and that's a bad percentage in my opinion But this goes back to the idea of Microsoft setting expectations for people and not delivering on those expectations. And it's a mistake because nobody asked you to do this. Nobody was demanding you to show us what's coming in the next year. You decided to do it for yourself. You decided to put your back back against the wall and basically give a running deadline for all these games to actually come out because you knew what people would say if they didn't, they broke your promise. Right. And here we are in this situation, instead of talking about Starfield and how better it looks now and how we can't wait for the Starfield direct. A lot of people are just talking about the fact that it's delayed and there must be a problem because it's it's its second delay. And what is going on with Xbox? Do they know what they're doing? Do they know how to run a company? Phil Spencer and Matt Booty, they need to just be fired. Satya needs to just come clean house because they can't manage expectations properly. That is what people are talking about simply because you wanted to get a cute PR victory. So never, ever, ever, ever do this again. 
Don't do it. I don't care what Sub ZX says. You know, him and his <laughs> him and his zero concessions with the CMA. I don't care. I don't care. Anybody that's just like, no, keep on doing it because whatever. No, 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 no. Never do it again. Ever, 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 ever. I don't want to have to listen. If they do it again next year and they say this perfect dark's coming at the end of 2024 and then perfect dark doesn't come. I don't want the situation to be like, oh, what's going on at the initiative and crystal dynamics? Are there problems? Does Phil Spencer and Matt Booty know what they're doing? They need to be fired. Blah, blah, blah. Nonsense constantly over and over and over again. Just put on a great show. Show games that are coming, I don't know, in the next two years or whatever. And if you're confident enough to have a, a, a date on it, give the date. But do not unilaterally say you can play it all Good. in the next 12 months. Because that's what they did. And if some people have a problem with that and they say, well, yeah, Rand, they didn't promise, dude. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like they had a contract with you and they, they said release dates. You know, did you see the asterisk? You saw the asterisk, right? The asterisk at the end said you was just targeting stuff. Uh, why are you getting so upset about it? You know? You went for like four different accents there. I mean, I, mean, I slip in and out of that stuff. You, you sounded like a surfer dude. And, and then by the end, you sounded like a South Park that's, character. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, it's just that that, that uh, some of that stuff I saw on social social media, but like, did you say that? Oh my god, it's it, 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 the, the asterisk. It, it, does it mean it? It's like, yeah, I must have missed the part where after Sarah Bond said the games you're gonna play in the next twelve months, and then she winked at the camera and said maybe because some of the stuff might get delayed because you know game development's pretty tough and stuff happens. So, you guess. Yeah. All in all, whatever. I'm I'm excited to play Starfield. I can't wait for the Starfield Direct. Give as much time as it needs. I'm perfectly happy with when it's coming. I'm just... It's like, bro, st- stop it, Xbox. Stop shooting yourself in the foot on these things. Like, this is just all your own doing. In the, it, like, in... It is their own doing. And I, I think, like, they probably just overthought it a little bit. They didn't need to. They didn't need to do that twelve months thing, you know. Yeah. They could have just said twenty near near future. Slap us with a vague thing. I mean, they're probably reacting to a lot of you know people bitching and complaining that we don't know launch dates or whatever, and they probably wanted to mitigate some of that commentary with that promise. But I don't know. They can't do it again, but maybe they won't have to do it again because, you know, pandemic's over. Maybe they're going to start finally having a steady cadence of launches. Maybe, you know, we've been waiting a long time for this, you know, kicking the can down the road, Rand, and saying, mm. like, just wait a hey, little longer. Just to wait a bit. The, the light yeah, at the end of the tunnel long. is getting closer, isn't it? It's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not looking this, <laughs> at the same distance away. It's it's getting closer, right? The, yeah, yeah. You reach it's out. Not, it's, uh, it's almost yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, it's almost In my reach. Again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, oh, you want to know something, good. though? I did, I did read... Uh, saying that the reason Microsoft can get away with all this, that can get away with delaying these games and not providing Why? for con- not providing content for people, is because of Xbox content creators and YouTubers like Jez Cord and Randall Thor, Cold Eastwood, Dealer Gaming, and everybody, because they're just shills, and <laughs> and, and because no. because they never hold Xbox accountable for anything, Xbox no. can do whatever they want. Because they never Dang. get called out by their fans. Dang. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine me having that power. Imagine me also as someone who's just like a shill, like who's never criticized Microsoft about anything. You know, well, bro. I got something to tell you, bro. What? The the only reason Microsoft's buying Activision Blizzard, yes, is because of me. Really? I I I I helped Phil in the DMs, and I was like, look, Phil. You gotta buy me Blizzard, bro, or I'll send a nasty tweet about Xbox, bro. Mm, and he did and, it. And okay. Phil, Phil got Amy Hood on the line. He's like, "Look, look, Jez is threatening to send a nasty tweet. We need to spend seventy billion dollars, bro, bro." Mm. <laughs> like, the, the, like the idea of like one that I'm a big enough influencer with ninety thousand subs that I direct what Microsoft thinks, <laughs> and like the idea that like for a platform that has a hundred million monthly active users and is like 
20 million, 22 million consoles sold that someone like me in the grand scheme of things is just a grain of sand on a beach, a drop in the water. What I say doesn't matter oh, in very, the grand, very poetic, right? grand scheme of things. Xbox is going to do what Xbox is going to do. Because I've seen it's like, you got to hold them accountable, bro. You got to get down out there and Twitter and you got to tell them, guess what? We're not going to stand for this Xbox. Hold this L. But it's like, okay, I can give my opinion about all this, but what exactly do you expect them to do? Do you expect them to Todd Howard to see all this and be like, God, they're right. We, we, we're holding this out. You know what? Move up the release date to June. You're right. It shouldn't come out in September. <laughs> Move up the release date. You're right. So and so on Twitter said, "Hold this L. I'm out here because I keep it a hundred, and I'm holding them accountable. Holding them accountable would probably entail, you know what? Maybe sell your Xbox, cancel your Game Pass subscription, don't play Starfield when it comes out. Otherwise, all you're really doing is bitching." on social media and then just basically going about as normal and playing Starfield and enjoying game Pass as regularly. So like what is Microsoft supposed to take from that? You're out there being like, hold this L and I'm holding you accountable. We got to call you out, but at the same time, you're not changing anything. You're, I don't know. A lot of it doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't know. Like my 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 criticisms, like just don't do twelve months again, please. Don't set your set up for, set yourself up for failure. So you have all these talking points that'll eventually all circulate again. Like let the games freely speak for themselves, and don't announce release dates until you absolutely are sure you can hit them. Right? I mean, if people don't like Xbox and don't like the platform because they're like they're they're upset of all the broken promises or whatever sort of like fine guess what you know there's an avenue for you to do it sell your xbox cancel your game pass subscriptions buy your games on another platform speak with your wallet is the only way these companies like the only sort of message these companies really understand right and i don't understand also people who don't care about xbox being so concerned about what Xbox is doing. If you're concerned about PlayStation and that's your prerogative and that's what you want to talk about, then please talk about X, then talk about PlayStation. Talk about the virtues of, of that platform. Talk about the great things that it does, but make sure to also criticize its shortcomings. But it, for a lot of people, at least what I've seen, a lot of PlayStation people are more concerned about how horrible Xbox is, at least in their mind. And they consistently talk about Xbox. You know what? I don't care about Nintendo and we barely ever talk about Nintendo on this platform because we just don't care. They don't, they don't matter to me. So why even bother bring it up? PlayStation. We also rarely talk about PlayStation on this channel. We only really talk about them recently because of the whole ABK drama, because they're just full of bullshit. And most of the time we talk about PlayStation is because of the games they're producing. I'm not really concerned about what PlayStation is doing. I'm concerned about what Xbox is doing. It just seems to me that a lot of PlayStation fans are more concerned about the things Xbox is doing rather than the things that PlayStation is up to. At least judging from social media, because they certainly tweet about Xbox more than they tweet about PlayStation. You, that couldn't be me, bro. That couldn't be me. No, I don't know. I literally never think about PlayStation. Yeah. I mean, the the only times when I think about PlayStation is when they've said something ridiculous as pertains to the ABK deal. I'm frankly looking forward to the end of this saga just so I can go back to not thinking about PlayStation, frankly. You know, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just not interested, you know. I'm a tech guy at the end of the day. I'm excited about what Microsoft's doing with AI and the hardware and all the rest of it, you know, the full the full ecosystem. You know, PlayStation's cool, but it's just like, you know, it's not where I find my passion, you know. Um, but, yeah, no. 100%. It's not, so. enough for these, not enough for these guys. It, everything, for fanboys, everything has to be a battle. Everything has to be an us versus them. Everything has to be like, you know, up against it and stuff. And the only reason, like, we ever mention playstation on this show is when it, it pertains to xbox and 
unfortunately, with this ABK deal, because Jim Ryan's making such a song and dance about it, unfortunately, it just keeps coming up. But, yeah, it's going to... Dude, I'm, I'm so ready for this story arc of Xbox to be over. This has been the most laborious, grinding, painful content cycle ever you know <laughs> and it's i can't believe you know it's still going on and it's probably going to be going on for months months oh well i just put out a i put out a poll because i'm very interested in seeing what people think did xbox break its promise regarding starfield and other games in regards to their e3 um make sure you guys vote in the poll uh, I'm very interested in seeing how that all uh, plays out. Um, I have some super chats here I want to get to. Uh, Big of Froman Four says, "Between the two of you, which is Jesse and Walter from Breaking Bad?" Also, do you guys cook shrimp? I do not cook. Um, but I don't know. Are you Jesse or Walter, Jez? Um, I think I'm Jesse. Man. You're Jesse. Okay, that makes that makes me Walter. Yeah, Fair it begins with the J for 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 one thing. Unless I, I think I've got a better fashion sense. So, Jesse's a bit more fashionable than Walter, I think. Uh, Achievement says Xbox looks bad because Outer Worlds relaunched buggy, even though it was Private Division and Obsidian who remastered it. They can't catch a break. Yeah, that whole Outer Worlds uh, Spacer's Choice stuff is very odd. Like the upgrade yeah, path. Like- like yeah the that reeks of private division man i mean i i said i said before like i said on twitter take two are the kings of the botched re-release like the the whole the whole uh you know the gta trilogy thing they put out awful and now they're doing it again with the outer worlds and you know it's like there's there's pretty much no there's no real mention of it from microsoft Microsoft owns the IP to the Outer Worlds, but Private Division, which is part of Take Two Interactive, they own the publishing rights to the Outer Worlds One. So they've put out, they've crapped out this port. Um, I, I who who made it? It wasn't Obsidian, right? No, it was it was, um, it was private division and it was a different studio i i i I know the name of the studio but i'm blanking on it right now vert someone with the v like virtuous something or Mm. yeah it was it was a yeah but apparently it looks worse it runs worse the whole upgrade path is awful you can't use your save files yeah terrible shit man but oh well yeah it's uh pretty sad, but thank God uh, Outer Worlds is with the Xbox, and we won't have to deal with that for for the next one. Although you know, Obsidian did make uh did give a next gen patch for the game. Uh, it runs at sixty frames on the Series X, so I don't mm. even think you really need Outer Worlds. Uh, you don't need the Spacer's Choice one. Uh, Johnny Sin says, "Did you hear about Nick boxing a kangaroo?" Uh, no. <laughs> uh, what it's special Nick boxing a kangaroo? Really? I'd love to see that. Uh, we also have uh, a super chat I missed earlier from Joaquin Branch, who says, I asked what the implications of Xbox partnering with Paradox is, and should we pay attention to this newfound partnership? <laughs> you think that means anything, Jez, the whole Paradox stuff? Because Paradox announced that uh, during their event that City Skylines 2 is coming to Game Pass Day 1, which I think is pretty big, and that the Lamplighters League is also coming to Game Pass on day one, but also is an Xbox exclusive as well. So they seem to be... That was surprising. Um, But yeah. I mean, Paradox is an interesting studio. Like, I mean, they're kind of... They're a big studio. You know, they make a lot of games, a lot of very, very popular games, but they're almost always strategy games, and they're almost always simulation games, 4X strategy or survival simulation games like surviving mars and or and stuff like that um and then like the turn based the turn based uh, tactics games like baltech for for example so like um 
yeah, that that their, their, their showcase was presented by Xbox, like sponsored by Xbox, which is I've never seen that before, for one thing. And then and then they announced a bunch of timed exclusives and exclusives and Game Pass exclusives, and it's just like, wow, that they're really going hard. But this isn't the first time Microsoft and Paradox have collaborated quite hard. Because Crusader Kings 3 um also launched into Xbox Game Pass. And also um Microsoft and Paradox <laughs> announced this weird partnership a few years ago that went to nothing. Mm. Do you remember this? Um Paradox and Microsoft announced a partnership to bring mods to the Microsoft store. And they they made a big they made a big song and dance about that. It was a, there was a big blog post on Microsoft about it. They were going to have this close partnership for modding tools. And then just nothing happened. Nothing came of it. And I'm guessing it's the the Windows team that held that up. Because there's there's all like all, all kinds of weird issues between Xbox and Windows when it comes to the Xbox store. But they've been pretty close for a, a pretty long time. So, yeah, I mean... I do wonder, you know, because Tencent kind of does these kind of close partnerships with publishers sometimes where they do, they drop some investment and then they do these like, you know, pervasive collaborations and stuff like that. I have no idea if Microsoft is actually fully directly invested in Paradox or its parent company, because I think Paradox is owned by some, some other company, unless I'm confusing them with someone else. But, um... But they're very close. They're very buddy buddy. I don't know what that means for the future, but I don't know. I love Paradox games. I think Paradox games are brilliant. I've got more hours sunk into Stellaris than I can possibly count. It's just, um, you know, kind of depressing that I've never actually finished a match in Stellaris. <laughs> Man, I got like I got like two hundred hours in Stellaris. I've never finished a game because I I always get to like the the mid the mid end game and just you know my my pc can't handle it anymore so i have to start over there's just too too much crap going on too many ships and too many units i don't know um but yeah i love paradox games and i think it's really awesome the city skylines as well dozens of hours into that really addictive game i remember having an argument with aaron greenberg about city skylines by the way really you yeah i did you guys can go and ask him about this because i noticed that because Aaron Greenberg's posting screenshots of City Skylines from his map because he really he plays City Skylines a lot. And um his roads were all square, square grids. And then like I realized that that's how America designs their roads. They're all like square grids, right? But in Britain the roads are all over the place like spaghetti because I suppose the roads were just there before logical planning existed <laughs> so like my city skylines maps looks like british roads where they're just the roads are all over the place like spaghetti and aaron greenberg's just look like these perfect squares of roads everywhere i don't know <laughs> and i was like my way's better looks looks more homely you know square square roads looks like the matrix or something man yeah no i don't know i mean i the, those type of games aren't for me but i know i mean city skylines is 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 love people love it I'm surprised Skylines Two is coming to Game Pass on day one. I mean, it, and even Capcom Sting, Axel Primal, uh, that uh, shooter from them that's coming in July is coming to Game Pass on day one. Although to be fair, I don't think that game looks very good. But <clears throat> I mean, this is shaping up to be what we had sort of said at the beginning of the year that this is going to be Xbox Game Pass's biggest year, best year by far. I mean, even already it's. So really, I mean, even right now, like you look at January, February, and March, it's on fire, dude. Hi-Fi Rush, Age of, M- Age of Empires Definitive Edition, GoldenEye. Ugh. I mean, I guess we can skip that one, but Wolong, <laughs> Atomic Heart. Um, and then, you know, you got like the upcoming, you got like Red- Redfall and Minecraft Legends and Starfield, Forza Motorsport. You know, if the deal goes through with Diablo 4 and a Call of Duty and City Skylines 2 and, like, Exo Primal, it seems like they they have, like, something big every single month. And then, they, you know, they pepper in their, like, you know, bigger indie games like uh, Benedict Fox and stuff like that. I, I, I think this is definitely going to be their best year for Game Pass. 
Yeah, you know, that's not even to mention like Arc Two is supposed to be this year. Stalker Two is supposed to be sometime this year. Like, Did you already mention Exo Primal? I just mentioned Exo Primal coming yeah. to Capcom, Capcom's game coming to which was a was a that, surprise. That, yeah. that game looks silly fun. It looks really fun, man. It's like it looks like Anthem crossed with Left 4 Dead. That's the, that's the thing Anthem had going for it. Anthem had amazing combat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like I'm gonna piss off every Destiny fan on Earth right now. Anthem was better than Destiny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't care. I would die in that hell. Anthem's combat wiped the floor with Destiny. You know, the only the only problem with Anthem was that there was nothing to do. <laughs> so like you had this great combat system, but then nothing to do. You just fought the same boss over and over again. That was the end game, and then all the loot was just mathematically arbitrary. I don't know, but Exo Primal looks really really fun, and it's got a really interesting premise. Like it's like split up dimensions or something. And there's like some AI making making things loop over, and they're using time travel to dump dinosaurs on you or something. It's really crazy, really wacky. I'm I'm really interested in it. But yeah, uh, I got some super super chats to get to. Um, Dave Ramos says playing Outer Worlds for the first time feels very Fallouty with color. That sixty dollar price though, oof, doesn't include the two expansions. Thoughts? Is it real? Well, I mean, I guess well the Spacer's Choice one includes the DLC, if I'm not mistaken. I think the original one doesn't, uh, but the original one's also on Game Pass, and you would have to buy the DLC. Um, right? Spacer's Choice comes with the DLC, correct, Jez? I, I, uh, I would imagine. Yeah, so. I think it does. Yeah, uh, it does. Yeah. Dead Planet says, "Does Starfield show up again at a Fall Dev Direct?" Well, I mean that you're assuming there is going to be a fall dev direct. And I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the case. I mean, I I would I would say no because they're having their own direct on June 11th with the game launching a couple months afterwards. And Forza does their monthly stuff, and that might be it because I guess the other aspect of the Starfield mm. delay, right? is what does that mean for Xbox's end of the year, right? You had said last week on this very podcast, not only you, but also Jeff Grubb, were of the opinion that uh, Hellblade 2 was coming this year, yes? In fact, I believe your exact quote was, you would bet money that Hellblade 2 was this year, yes? Yep, that's not based on anything. No lies. That's based. You're lying now to everybody. No, it's based on a feeling, bro. You never, you never make those sort of comments unless you know something. No, no, no. Heard something, dude. You predict shit all the time. Why can't I? I'm predicting that it'll launch this year, maybe based on nothing but a wing and a prayer. (sighs) Okay, now that we know Starfield is coming in September, how do you feel about the possibility of Hellblade releasing some point in the fall this year? Um, I feel pretty good about that. You still feel pretty good. About Hellblade launching in the fall? Yeah, yeah. Mm, um, I'd say winter. Well, fall, winter, I mean, same thing. I mean, give me, give me, <clears throat> give me, a, give me a date. Give, give me a month that you think would be really good for Hellblade 2. Mm, November, December, maybe. November, December, okay. What about, what? So where do you see Forza Motorsport? That's a guess, based on nothing. Based on nothing. I put Forza in October. Forza, I mean, that makes sense. You, you typical Forza. Um, I want to believe, Jess. I want to believe you so badly because Hellblade Two is my game, bro. Ninja Theory. I I love the first one. There's a part of me that makes. I think it's a little difficult to imagine Hellblade releasing this year. I think Starfield coming in September. <laughs> You need to give that game a wide berth. It's going to be massive. It's going to be huge. And with you know Forza Motorsport coming in October, if we had to guess, that's good release time frame. But then it's like you could own Call of Duty, and maybe that game could be on Game Pass. And I sort of feel like if that was the case, I don't know if you're going to release that on Game Pass and then put Hellblade out a couple weeks later. I mean, are you saying that Hellblade 2 would come in December and totally miss the game awards? I, I feel like I feel like that game is 
prime for recognition at the Game Awards. Yeah, no one cares about the Game Awards, bro. Oh, stop it. Absolutely stop it. That's nonsense. <laughs> uh... I don't know. Like, I'm feeling less confident about Hellblade 2 releasing this year because Starfield is now in the fall. And I know people will say, you know, Rand, I mean, like, they don't care about that because they released Halo and Forza Horizon, like, a week apart or whatever. But to that, I say, well, it's Forza Horizon, perhaps their biggest franchise, and Halo, one of their other biggest franchises. And they, they don't really conflict as much. But, I mean... I, I guess it's possible. Maybe, maybe they put Hellblade in the that November slot where, uh, you know, what was the game? Pentiment came out. They give enough of reviewers enough time to play it so it's out for the Game Awards and whatever. But then there's that specter of Call of Duty. And if, uh, you know, if the deal's done and, you know, what do they do with that? Are they prevented from putting in Game Pass? I don't know. Maybe they can. Maybe maybe Sony forgot to put anti-Game Pass provisions in a contract uh, with Activision regarding that game uh, because they didn't think it was being a thing when they signed it in 2018 or whatever. Or they thought they didn't have to because Activision Blizzard would never put it in Game Pass anyways and they had no thought. Nobody would conceive of Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, right? So we don't really know. So... Personally, I think they should. I know some people will be like, nah, release it at the beginning of next year so you can have a really good 2024. But it's like, I just say release the games when they're ready. If Hellblade 2 is ready to come and rock and roll in November, then release that baby. You know what I mean? Yep. That's that's what I think. Sure, um, we, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, I'm going to crumb. So technically, Microsoft didn't lie. Starfield just isn't playable to the public. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's yeah, true. I guess. Yeah. I guess that's true. Uh, Nano Polymyth, what's up, buddy? He says, "Nice Microsoft applied polish to get Starfield out for 2023. Dealer is no shill. Just hasn't created any content in months. Rand is always assisting Jez in the podcast. Has he thought about becoming his full time personal assistant on Windows Central? Ooh, woo. Jez, you need. You, yeah, I, I need a PA. I need a I, PA. We man. have like. Is Dealer not made any content? Not really, no. Yeah. You know, he does he does RDX, and he doesn't really he hasn't really. I think I think a lot of us are just over the art uh, over the ABK stuff, and don't really want to make any content about it. And that's all that's really gone on in the Xbox world recently. So, not really. Um, but you know, if you're an Xbox YouTuber, I guess See, that this just is, this is why you guys need to come up with original ideas, man. Like my storage article. Well, I have to come up with I have to come yeah, up with editorial the ideas is, the thing, every few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, you actually talk to people about that. I, I don't. Who am I going to talk to? I don't always talk to people about. I that mean, stuff. you, you specific... I've, I've written an article today that's going to come out tomorrow, which yep. is all about my super lazy, amazing X Cloud setup. Man, you, you're going to be mind blown yeah. at my X Cloud setup. But also, man. you write articles in ten minutes. <clears throat> uh, my video yesterday took me an hour and a half yeah but still there's there's a there's, uh, there's a big difference between writing an article and making a video oh, man. And, 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 oh. and and dealer and colt's videos take way longer than mine so you know <laughs> you 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 would think li- you would think a little bit differently if an article you had to write took you four to five hours to write you'd be like is this worth nah, it yeah you nah, would you totally nah. would you wouldn't even be a writer nah nah well, you know, it is what it is. But like I say, you know, you could come up with your ideas, bro. Like, I, I want to hear like, um, I want to, I want to see a video that's just like the top five games I'm looking forward to most this year from Rand. I want to see that video, bro. Why? It doesn't I'm... always have to be about Xbox, man, or about Xbox news. It's about Xbox in general, bro. We talk about it every week on the show. You know what my top five games are. You don't need a video for that. People don't. Yeah, the of course algorithm do. doesn't. What? Tell the algorithm, bro. I've told the algorithm. They know. Tell it, tell it again. No, oh, tell it again. <laughs> uh, so what's what's this poll at? We got basically 450 votes. Did Xbox break its promise regarding Starfield and other games? 54% say yes, and 46% say no. It's very, very split down the middle, Jez. Are you surprised by this? 
We got like over, I don't know, 1,300 people watching, 1,400 or something. And it seems, you know, pretty close. So I guess those, I guess those people saw the asterisks. Or Rand, it could be, it could be like I said, maybe this is just 4D marketing, right? Mm, 4D marketing, 4D, okay. Because, because, right, Starfield is set in space, right? So due to time dilation, because of the gravitational waves, that's why it's releasing in September. And it's actually just genius space marketing, bro. No? No? Mm. No? no? Genius. No? No? Gray Fox says, hey, Rand, love your channel. Greetings from Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Hey, Gray Fox, hope you're enjoying the show. Thank you so much for enjoying the channel. Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Hey, do us a favor. We have a bunch of people here. I see Fonz in the chat. He says there is no promise made. Uh, I've I always love when we ask this, but let us know where you're from in the chat. I want to see how far the reach is. You know, this is what 4:40 p.m. my time. It's uh 10:40 p you know p.m. Jez's time. I'm getting oh, sleepy, bro. and you're getting sleepy, and we still got some times to go. We still got to talk about ABK, so you got we got to we got to wake up Jez. You got to got to get an energy drink, drink out on him. Oh, um, let oh, us man. know where where you're from, what countries. You know, I want to see I want to see a good good spread here of of places. I'm always super interesting to see. You know, people where they're at. You know, you got Minnesota and Australia, Austin, Texas, Atlanta, Brooklyn. Mexico, um, Netherlands, Greece, Greece, Sydney, Australia, Sacramento, Bahamas, look at all that. Chile, Slovakia. Luxembourg, you know, I, 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 I have Slovakian descent. I'm, I'm, I'm <coughs> Irish. Oh, really? I am like fifty. I'm fifty percent Irish, and twenty five percent Slovakian, and twenty five percent Croatian. I believe is the other one. That's interesting. No, yeah, I think it's twenty five percent Slovakian, twenty five percent, yeah, something like that. A lot something of Greeks like that. in the house. That's awesome. I um, my my lineage is so basic. It's literally just UK and Scandinavia. <laughs> Someone it's, says he's from the North Pole. Are positive. you are you Santa Claus, bro? Johnny, Johnny Sins, he's from the North, he lives in the North Pole. <laughs> Somebody just DM me and say, hey, Phil was uh, playing Hellblade last night on Xbox. Is this a sign that Hellblade 2 is <laughs> coming? <laughs> oh, snap. Maybe it is. It could, it could is, be bro. possible. could be possible. You know, Phil, he, he drops those hints and the stuff he's playing. <laughs> Jeff, JetFan95 says, I live in Fantasyland. My neighbor is Jim Ryan. <laughs> 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 Injured Cold says Stalker 2 and AoE 4 in November Hellblade in February AoE 4 is supposed to come out this year on console that is true and Stalker 2 is also supposed to release as well so um geez let's uh yeah, let's 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 get into the ABK stuff why why not Jess? ABK 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 AB <laughs> this is this is your weekly Xbox ABK update yeah uh, can't wait for it all to be just completely done and over with. But it was definitely very spicy this week regarding. Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth uh, yeah. this, this week. And, uh, man, Lulu from Lulu. Activision kicking off, I don't setting even, people the on thing fire. Is, it's, like, it's like, where do you even wow. begin? You know, it's funny. Somebody somebody on like uh, one of the discords of Matt's like, hey, where is SIE located? And I replied to the person with uh, uh, their headquarter. They're, they're stationed uh, at the headquarters of the CMA right now. <laughs> and I got like a whole bunch of thumbs ups or whatever. It's like, where do we uh, even begin with this week? I guess we can start with um, basically both Sony and Microsoft had their replies republished by the CMA regarding the whole remedy situation. And Microsoft has like a 30 page document about what they're offering their, you know, the, the, the terms and like, Hey, we're, we're offering 10 year deals and con like all this sort of stuff. But what really caught a lot of people's attention was Sony's response because they're pretty much out there just like 
<clears throat> we've been talking about for a while. They want either one, the deal completely blocked, or two, for Activision Blizzard to get divested and owned by a third party that, you know, Xbox doesn't control, right? Um, where do we, where do we even where do we even begin? I guess it's the thing. Je- it all started with the CMA releasing the the comments that Sony and Microsoft made. So it was like Sony's comments and then Microsoft's response to those comments. And then after that, we had Lulu from Activision who basically called out Sony's comments and was like, well, hang on a sec. You said this behind closed doors in Brussels, which mm. directly contradicts what you said to the CMA. And then we had Sony come back today with another statement saying that um, Microsoft had redacted <clears throat> the exact terms of the deal, which means that they can't legally share them. And that um, kind of daring Microsoft to, to show them what the full terms of the deal is, which was interesting, I thought. Um, and then also finishing it off with... Um, Call of Duty at Microsoft will irreparably damage the gaming industry. Irreparably. What, yes. Irreparably. One gaming franchise, which is by no means going to be around forever, um, the whole gaming industry will collapse without Call of Duty being multi-platform. Without, if PlayStation can't have Call of Duty, the whole industry, all of it, Nintendo, Steam, Tencent, everything epic games Fortnite. if if playstation doesn't have call of duty Fortnite will just suddenly explode candy crush saga will delete itself from everyone's phones and also just break everyone's phones and also if call of duty can't be on playstation then every steam deck in existence will spontaneously combust and xbox series x consoles will just red ring of death yeah, we'll get the red ring of death on Xbox consoles, all of them. And um, yeah, the the planes will fall out of the sky, Rand. It'll be it'll be it'll be the apocalypse. It'll be Armageddon. If PlayStation can't have everything it wants, the world will end, bro. That's apocalypse. what it sounds like. Apocalypse, bro. But I mean, in but, so- yeah, it's pretty much where we're at now. So, and so Sony's desperate. Yeah. Oh, and also Microsoft took out ads in the British newspapers. Yeah. What is that which... about? Start there. So start start with the ad things because you <laughs> don't you don't understand what that's all about. They they basically said that they're going to be bringing Call of Duty to 150 players, and I see a lot of journalists questioning that number, like 150 million. What is that? I mean, clearly it's just Nintendo <clears throat> Switch's total addressable market and Nvidia. Sure. Nvidia's total addressable market, and they add those two together, and boom, and 150 Steam. million. Right? I don't. Steam. What? And Steam well, too. It's already like, on Steam. It doesn't matter. It's not. Yeah. It's not on Steam. This Modern Warfare Two is on Steam. Yes. Mm, I don't think so. Get your bro. facts straight, bro. It is 100% on Steam, my dude. Isn't it just on Battle.net? No, it's on Steam. Let me check. I need to check this. You do. I don't, I don't believe. I'm you. right. I, believe I know I'm right. I will bet you 100 bucks right you. now. Thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Let's go. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand yeah. dollars. Now I'm definitely going to check because even if there's a small chance that you're wrong, I want my ten thousand. I'm not wrong though, and I know you can afford it because you I'm, can just sell. I, I can't afford it, but Modern Warfare Two is that is that the one? Is that the current one? Does the current one that just came out is on Steam? Yes. Call of Duty. Okay, Modern Warfare Two is right, mm-hmm. but yes. You know what isn't on Steam? What? Warzone. Okay. So there you go. Warzone. Is Warzone not is Warzone not on Steam? No, I don't, I don't know if it is or not. You need Battle.net. You need Battle.net for Warzone. So, yeah, bro. <laughs> so yeah, that's the the timeline of events this week. Shall we talk about exactly what? Well, not the whole thing because it's like a thousand pages well, long. Well, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll get we'll get to the we'll get, we'll get to the juicy parts, right? This is what 
Sony Give says us is Give us why that a behavioral remedy in this case is not suitable, right? That these are the things that Microsoft could do. Uh, Microsoft well, could Google deploy. It is un- right. So basically 150 million <laughs> number is the total number of switches sold plus the NVIDIA GeForce accounts. That's like 25 million. Boom, you get 150 million. I, like, I get like what they're saying that it's a little bit misleading to a certain degree because like obviously some of those people are going to own an Xbox or a PlayStation or already played on your PC. So it's like, it's not really 150 million people, but like, it's just a total addressable market of, of, of people. So I don't know. It's weird. Plus, I mean, they literally said that during their whole like, uh, event that you were at. So Sony goes on to say that Microsoft could deploy multiple strategies to fully or partially foreclose access to Activision content Jez, in relation to call of mm-hmm. duty. Sony has explained that in addition to withholding access to existing or future Call of Duty titles. Remember, because all this is Sony basically crying at the top of their lungs. They could take Call of Duty from us, right? They could make it exclusive, even though Microsoft's like, we actually want more people to play it. We don't want to make it exclusive. And and, and Sony's not gone from not crying that they could take it away to basically saying, "We we want it on PlayStation Plus, but we want it on PlayStation Plus for free, right? Um... Microsoft could adopt one of these strategies to impair PlayStation's competitiveness. One, they could raise the price of Call of Duty on just PlayStation. So, $90 on PlayStation and $70 elsewhere. What is the likelihood of that? Zero. Right? They could degrade the quality and performance of Call of Duty on PlayStation compared to Xbox. They could degrade huh? they could degrade Call of Duty to ignore PlayStation specific features like the haptics. They, oh, could, no. they could restrict, degrade, or not prioritize investment in the multiplayer portion on PlayStation. And they could make Call of Duty available only on Game Pass. These are the reasons why Sony will not stand for behavioral remedy and the deal must be blocked or have to be sold off, right? Uh, and then this is where it gets the whole thing in my video where it's pathetic and why I put PlayStation lies in the title. Because this is where it gets <laughs> absurd and embarrassing. Because at this point, you just realize Sony's throwing anything at the wall to see what sticks. Hopefully, uh, you know, hoping that the CMA doesn't know shit about the video game industry. They go on to say that Microsoft might release a PlayStation version of Call of Duty where bugs and errors emerge, but only in the game's final level. Or after later updates. And even if such degradations could be swiftly detected, any remedy would likely come too late. By which time the gaming community would have lost confidence in PlayStation as a go-to venue to play Call of Duty. And indeed, as Modern Warfare 2 attests, Call of Duty is most often purchased in just the first few weeks of release. If it became known that the game's performance on PlayStation was worse than on Xbox... Call of Duty gamers could decide to switch to Xbox for fear of playing their favorite game at a second class or less competitive venue. This is a loaded <clears throat> freaking paragraph, bro. There's so much bullshit here, right? I don't even know where to begin. I, I'll just take the end here about the idea of PlayStation not being the go-to venue for Call of Duty, about... Uh, gamers uh, n- not wanting to play in PlayStation for the fear that Call of Duty uh, at, on PlayStation would be a second-class experience. The funny thing, and the irony of this whole situation, is that's exactly what PlayStation has done to Xbox regarding Call of Duty with their exclusivity arrangements. They've made Xbox a second-class venue and a second-class experience with all their exclusivity stuff about perks and, you know, all these sort of things that PlayStation Hogwarts pays Legacy. for, right? They yeah. can they, they continuously do that for a lot of their games with marketing, but with Call of Duty. So it almost seems in this regard that PlayStation is deathly afraid of Microsoft doing to them what they do to... Right, am I saying this way? They're af- Sony's afraid that Microsoft will do to them what Sony does to Microsoft currently. Yes. Right? But, I mean, the idea... 
the idea that they would just sneak in bugs on the final level. Like, hey, when you're about to beat the final boss, Phil Spencer pops up and says, uh, you know, your, your PlayStation's bricked and it turns off or something. Right? Yeah. Like, ridiculous. The idea, this, are they saying this because they know that this stuff currently goes on? Is this something that happens? I mean, it clear, clearly the implication is that Sony knows that this might happen. You know, there was this whole conspiracy. I remember there was this whole ass conspiracy theory last December when Callisto Protocol came out and it was bro- the ray tracing was broken on Xbox Series S and X, right? And um, the conspiracy theory was that because Sony engineers had worked on Callisto Protocol, that the game was intentionally degraded on Xbox Series X, you know, and it's kind of like. You know, in, in light of these comments, it's like, what does Sony know that we don't? You know, I mean, obviously, their goal is to when they when they set up these exclusivity deals, leveraging their market share, they bake in, um, they bake stuff in to give Xbox fans a degraded experience, like the fact that Microsoft couldn't even advertise Hogwarts Legacy, um, you know, be, and then you've got the 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 quests that PlayStation get that Xbox doesn't get. And, you know, this goes all the way back to Destiny. When Destiny originally came out, Microsoft wasn't even allowed to acknowledge the Xbox version. And they, you know, that there was like, for years, Destiny had extra features, extra dungeons and extra quests that Xbox version didn't have, you know. And they do that stuff knowingly anti-competitively so, to give consumers a degraded experience, in my view. So, you know, it does feel like a hu- huge projection. It's, it's, it's a blatant projection, really. But, and the, the most confounding aspect of it, Rand, is that there are examples here that Microsoft can point to, to just say, well... Why haven't we done this with Minecraft? Why haven't we done this with Minecraft Dungeons? Why aren't we going to do it with Minecraft Legends? Why haven't we baked in bugs to Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Online, the the thousand versions of Skyrim that are on, you know, on PlayStation? What is what is Sony's problem? You know, I honestly I don't understand really what their fear is because I don't think anyone, even if you put Call of Duty on Xbox Game Pass, I don't think it's going to suddenly make everyone who's digitally logged into PlayStation switch platforms. I don't think paying $70 a year is going to change anyone's habits or not to a huge degree, you know. Even and and that is assuming that Microsoft won't offer them won't offer it on PS Plus anyway. Because if the deal goes through and that Microsoft does get Call of Duty on Xbox Game Pass, one of the things they've offered Sony is that they can put uh, Call of Duty onto PlayStation Plus. And then, again, it's parity, you know. Sony says they don't want that because the money they get from the retail version of Call of Duty is worth a lot of money to them. But this isn't what the regulators are supposed to to preserve the regulators are supposed to deliver consumers higher value for money and if call of duty is on playstation plus and xbox game pass that's a better deal for consumers i don't understand how this argument that sony's making has carries any validity and isn't just laughed out of the cma's courtroom or offices or whatever whatever they use, you know, the basement of some random minister in London, you know, whatever, whatever office the CMA purports to have. It's just, it's just mind blowing. It's just ridiculous. And it'll probably work. It'll probably work because the, the UK establishment is degraded. We've had morons running this country for over a decade at this point complete morons don't know their ass from their elbow and the entire establishment and yeah the cma is independent of the government but it's still like stacked with people from that 
sphere of influence. Morons, basically. Idiots. Complete ignorance, you know. So, yeah, it's just getting silly. So, like, you've got Sony looking desperate on that side. But Microsoft had a little bit of desperation of its own because Microsoft took out some full-page ads in the Financial Times, which is a big business newspaper publication in England. Um, we, and I don't know why they've done this. You know, I don't get it. I don't know what they think um, will happen if they do this. I, it's not like... It's not like someone in the government's going to read read this ad they're putting there and be like, "Oh yeah, we were wrong all along." You know, I I don't know what I don't know what their their mentality is there. So this full page ad it says Call of Duty on 150 million more devices and there's a picture of a Nintendo Switch and a, one of those LG cloud things which isn't even available in the UK by the mm. way. <laughs> so they put an LG cloud handheld which isn't available in the UK in the ad which is hilarious to me um so uh, <laughs> and uh and yeah I, i'm just like what what's the what's the goal here microsoft no one no one 99 percent of the people reading the financial times probably don't even know what call of duty is so you know they'll probably flip over this out of like what what the hell is this and just ignore it i i hope they didn't pay very much for it because i don't think it's going to do anything so it's it's just getting weird on both sides, and it's getting exhausting, you know. And there, then there was that whole thing where, you know, the CMA had opened their statements by saying that Microsoft hadn't attempted to negotiate with yeah, Sony Yeah, well, directly. that's right here. As the CMA yeah. is aware, SIE made known its concerns about the transaction to Microsoft almost a year ago. It's like, of course they did. As soon as the deal went through, Jim Ryan was on his phone to the CMA being like, you know what they need to do. This needs to be blocked. We're concerned about it, right? And he says, in the intervening, per intervening period, Microsoft has not shown any real commitment to reaching a negotiated outcome. They have dragged their feet, engaged only when they sensed the regulatory outlook was darkening, and favored negotiation in the media over engaging with SIE. Which... Well, <laughs> I, just, I just love Sony's mentality. It's like... Oh, why didn't they engage with us? We're the authority. It's like, who the fuck are you to tell to tell Microsoft what he should do with his seventy billion dollars? You know, it's it's it, the Sony's arrogance here that is just frustratingly depthless. It's like, who who the fuck are you? Who are you, Sony? You know. How dare they speak to the media instead of us, the kings of gaming? You know, that's why it's what it comes across to, like to me. I just, I just, I'm just so exhausted, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just. This you just want your StarCraft. All I want is my StarCraft, right? And all these people are just. Microsoft wants to pay shareholders seventy billion dollars, and. People are getting all in their morals about it, and they're like, "Oh my god, consolidation bad." <laughs> I, who cares? You know, it's not. It's not like it's not like it's the healthcare industry. It's not like it's it's like um I don't know, a utility. It's not like it's consolidation in um I don't know, insulin, which has led to like insane prices for diabetics and stuff like that. This is video games, you know. I want to see what a trillion dollar corporation can do with all these dead franchises, you know. If what we the only the, if this deal flops, we just get the status quo. We just get everything the same. We just get Call of Duty year in year out. That hasn't changed forever. Boring. It's boring. I'm bored. Activision Blizzard is boring right now. I just want StarCraft three. If my, I want to see what I want to see what Square I want to see what Square Enix will be like under PlayStation. I want to see what ABK would be like under Xbox. I want to see what all this stuff would be like. You know, video games isn't that important. It's not like it's not like this huge huge moral battle. You know, it's just like who cares? You know. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Well, then, so it's interesting that Sony says Microsoft doesn't want to negotiate because then Lulu, she uh, she she caused a stir again, Jez. Yeah, she did. You know, uh, this is a woman that caused grown men to cry and rage with the meme, a single meme. And she did it again. Uh, she said that Microsoft offered Sony, the dominant console leader for well over a decade with 80% market share, a 10-year agreement on far better terms than Sony would ever get from us. We've also offered Sony guaranteed long-term access to Call of Duty, but they keep refusing. Why? The CEO of SIE, the one and only flying, crying, gym, dance move, saving Private Ryan, <laughs> answered that question in Brussels in his own words, quote, I don't want a new Call of Duty deal. I just want to block your merger. But this is Sony saying that Microsoft isn't basically showing any real commitment to negotiate with SIE, but you have, you know, Jim Ryan basically saying, I don't want a new deal. I just want to block. Like, what's the real truth here? Is Microsoft not wanting to negotiate or is this Sony doesn't or is Sony the one not wanting to negotiate because they just they just hoping the deal gets blocked and goes away I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle on this one but it's really just hilarious to see so many people are upset about this because she was like oh my god she broke trust that was in a private meeting how dare she say how dare she tell the truth how dare she say what Jim Ryan said it was private meeting you're not supposed to do that um, How dare she expose the lies and hypocrisy? You know, I, the same people moralizing are just backpedaling on this now. It's yeah. just like you, you can't you can't have it both ways, you know. But that's that's what this deal that's what this deal is exposing. It's exposing fanboy hypocrisy, man. Aggressive fanboy hypocrisy. You know. Mm. My, I've I've always I've been open and transparent about my bias. I just want StarCraft Three. I don't care about the rest of it. I don't care about Call of Duty at all. Just I just this this is the only chance that I get StarCraft Three. Once once Phil Spencer name checked StarCraft Three, that was all that was all that I was interested in. What's good about this deal for me? StarCraft Three, you know. And then I extrapolate from that. Okay, what are the other implications here? A, shareholders. 95% voted in favor of it. Shareholders own the company. Shareholders think it's a good deal. Capitalism, baby. You know, that should be the end of it at the end of the day. Okay, what are the competition concerns? Microsoft's addressed those repeatedly and very loudly. They'll put Call of Duty on Nintendo Switch, which doesn't have it right now. That improves competition. That boosts competition. It doesn't harm competition. It boosts it. That makes that takes an advantage away that PlayStation has over Nintendo Switch. That helps Nintendo to compete a little bit more in the, you know, the higher end sort of core gaming shooter experience. Blah 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 blah. Um, and um, so there's that. And then it's kind of like, well, what do the workers think? I've spoken to dozens of ABK workers about this and they're all in favor of it because similarly to me, it's kind of like they see this as an opportunity for things to be shaken up a bit and they think Microsoft will shake up the executive leadership stuff and, um, and uh, bring about some positive changes. I mean, we had this whole thing this week with Act Activision Blizzard where, you know, reportedly Mikey Barra, um, our old pal from Xbox said some things in a meeting reportedly that really annoyed people. Like he said, Q and A reportedly, allegedly, he said that Q and A and customer support aren't long term roles or something, which some people felt was dismissive. And also, there's this whole drama about trying to get workers back in the office and um, not do remote working anymore. So, you know, there's a there's a whole there's a whole sort of sentiment that like they're hoping Microsoft will change up the executive layer and bring about more friendly policies, like a more flexible work from home policy and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. So 
yeah, I mean, you know, even if I look at this beyond my my Blizzard bias lens, there doesn't seem to be any reason for this deal not to go ahead unless you're a fanboy and you just believe everything Sony says. Nintendo fans have won it. You know, most Blizz- I haven't I haven't spoken to anyone who's a Blizzard fan who doesn't want it. The workers seem to want it. The shareholders want it. Xbox fans obviously want it. Anyone who's subscribed to Xbox Game Pass wants it. The only people who don't want it are Sony and Sony fanboys. You know. And I think, like, the, the, there's also, like, moralizing, you know, analysts who are really overthinking it and just, like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what their angle is. Like some people just seem like they 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 try to come up with these like these high overthought moralistic reasons why this shouldn't happen like consolidation bad without even really giving a real explanation for why. I don't think this is consolidation to the point where we'll see prices change. You know, I mean, if like the kind of consolidation that should worry people is Xbox dying. If Xbox dies. Xbox actually fully dies because, you know, Phil Spencer said Xbox is going to be untenable without a mobile presence. Phil Spencer said it, you know. If Xbox dies, like all these people are rooting for, all these analysts who seem to hate Microsoft and Xbox, if Xbox dies, that's when you're going to see $80 games. That's when you're going to see $600, $700 consoles. If PlayStation does have full-blown control of the market, that's the consolidation that will lead to higher prices. Microsoft owning one extra publisher does not lead to higher prices. So this isn't consolidation in the sense that anything negative in real terms will come of it. The only negative things that will happen uh, is like egos will be bruised. Oh, my ego. Uh." You know, it's just bullshit, man. Tired of it, bro. Yeah, yeah, and then I want it to be over. So bad. I know you do. And either that's... way, like it, just, just I either want Microsoft to pull out the deal or just make it happen. I'm just so, so tired of it, man. You know, but we get, we get in there. We're we're getting, we're getting there. there, and like we. So then uh, there's a bunch of redacted stuff in the documents. One of the things that did come out uh, was that Sony, that Microsoft is offering Sony Call of Duty on PlayStation Plus for the same basic, you know, duration as they would put it on Game Pass. But Sony doesn't want to pay Microsoft what Call of Duty's worth, and they feel if they did, it would basically destroy their seventy dollars game business. So it's not really fair to them, uh, you know, and they 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 want it for free. Um, and there's a lot of the redacted stuff, which, you know, Steven Totillo came out and had this thing where it says, so- Sony said that redacted versions of the op- observations filled by SIE and Microsoft and the CMA's remedies notice were made public this week. Information regarding the terms of an offer made by Microsoft to provide future Call of Duty releases on PlayStation was redacted at the request of Microsoft. We believe their current offer will irreparably harm competition and innovation in the industry. Remember, because, you know, Sony's out here saying the deal needs to be blocked to save consumers, to save developers, and to save the entire video game industry. Because if Microsoft got Call of Duty, they would use it to dominate the video game sector. The same Microsoft that is laughed at Bro. by people that says, hey, Xbox has no games. The same Microsoft that people were literally just talking about Xbox, Microsoft selling off Xbox if the deal doesn't go through. Or that they're in a bad position because they declined in the past quarter. But just getting Call of Duty and leaving it everywhere, in fact, actually bringing it to more places, somehow would give Microsoft the power to like literally dominate gaming. Which I, I think is absurd. This is Microsoft we're talking about. There's more likely a chance that they'll probably end up ruling, ruining Call of Duty like they've ruined Halo to a certain extent. Like... Who's to say that in 10 years, Call of Duty is even that big anymore? I, you never know what's going to happen in the future. You know, I just, this whole thing is just so funny to me that it's come down to this, right? You just got mudslinging, you know, you got desperation from Sony about all the things Microsoft may do. Oh, they may put bugs in the final level of the game. 
right? They they may do this to may make our f- players feel second class, which is what we do to Xbox players on a constant, consistent basis all the time with our marketing deals and our exclusive arrangements. But anytime yeah. PlayStation's on the other end of it or might feel they might be on the other end of it, God forbid they throw a hissy fit like they're a 10-year-old kid. And, you know, Microsoft's out here basically, you know, trying to get it through having ads in newspapers, uh, telling everybody how much they suck. Uh, they don't really have any games, and they don't certainly have as many great games as PlayStation does. Presenting themselves as just so weak, just weak and pathetic. Let us have Call of Duty and Activision, right? Um, I, I'm just waiting for the whole drama to just be, to be over. You know what I think is honestly going to happen? Because this would just encapsulate the whole thing. The EU is giving its decision on the 25th, and the CMA is giving its decision on the 26th, right? We know the FTC sued the block, but everybody says that, that you know, they take that to court. That's an easy victory for Xbox and Microsoft. I think you'll get the announcement from the EU on the, the 25th, and it'll be good to go. We approve it. And then the following day, so everybody's happy. And then the following day, the CMA is just going to be like, nah, screw you. We're blocking this shit. Yeah, I think that'll happen, yeah. And everybody's going to be like, what the heck? And then you'll have, and then you know what? It'll drag on because Xbox and Microsoft aren't going to stop it there. They're going to do whatever they need to do to uh, whatever. But it's not going to stop with the CMA. So even though we all want it to be over in a month from now, there's a chance that this shit drags on even longer. Well, dude, the CMI has no, there's no recourse. If the CMI blocks, there's no like process to force it through. So, you know, there's, there's kind of like, uh, you know, it would be funny I don't know. if, yeah, if, well. if, if Xbox like, all right, UK, you block it. We're pulling out, we're pulling out of, uh, the UK. So you finally get Starcraft, but it's not playable on Xbox in the UK. I mean, that's. Something I w- I honestly wonder could that really happen? Because not only you have to remember, like, would that would it just be Xbox pulling out the UK or all of Microsoft? Because, um, pretty much the entire UK government runs on Microsoft. They've all got so they've got like they bought like thousands of Surface devices from Microsoft. The UK government did. The NHS runs on Microsoft technology and all this kind of stuff. You know. So I I just like wonder is is that something that can happen? I just you know? I just want it where like you don't get your StarCraft either by the deal getting blocked or going through, but you not being able to play it because you're located in the UK. That would be so fitting. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I'd be for that. I'd be for that, man. Like seriously, you'd be like, using the, a VPN. You, yeah, I mean the UK deserves it. You know, yeah. we vote. We we keep voting in morons. We deserve it. You know. Oh well. Indeed. Anyways, guys, I hope you're enjoying the show. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, we're gonna be transitioning to uh Patreon questions. Uh, we do have a lot here, so if you want to drop us a question, you can do so at Patreon.com/slash XP2. Uh, we do have some questions here. We're gonna get to and make sure I get all these questions loaded up. Um, thank you guys so much though, by the way. Love you all. Yeah, um, you guys are awesome. Thanks sorry. so much for doing this. Yeah. Thank you so much. Big big pa- big pappy. <laughs> big pappy Mofongo says Jez will move to America. Yeah, I will do. Yeah. I'll move to I'll move Come I'll to move Chicago, to bro. Basement. Yeah, come to Chicago. Yeah, I will. Yeah, we can do the show isn't live. Chicago like isn't Chicago like like very cold? Yes. And during during the winter, absolutely absolutely yeah. is really cold so what do we got up first we got pro bro king saying hi what's up with paradox and xbox first they add their games in game pass then a game is missing xbox and now they're doing a partnership again xbox should buy paradox for the pc space yeah it was interesting they had a partnership and then i think it was victoria 3 that was announced for xbox and game pass and then they pulled it <coughs> and didn't even release and now they're cozy with them again I, I do think the CEO was replaced, weren't weren't they, Jez? Yeah, the CEO of uh, Paradox was ousted. There was some kind of 
drama stuff going down with with paradox at the time i have no idea what happened there you know um but yeah this the ceos they've got a new ceo now and yeah i it's that that whole victoria thing was so strange especially considering everything's all peachy again now but i suppose it is what it is right yeah all right so uh Next up, I mean, I don't know if they'll buy them. I mean, it might be a little tough for Microsoft to buy a publisher soon after buying ABK. Maybe they can continue yeah. doing partnerships, but we'll see. Battered Hadcock says, you're still going to write an article on hardware issues on Xbox, right, Jez? The unplayable eARC latency on Dolby and Dolby Atmos is driving me to consider the last resort, last resort third party on PlayStation 5, which doesn't have that issue. Tons have it across multi- multitude of TVs and sound bars, including John Linneman, it seems. Is this a Dolby Atmos issue? Yes. So, I mean, that's he says Dolby and Dolby Atmos. Unplayable yeah. EARC latency or something. EARC latency. Yeah, I, I don't know much about this. I haven't had a chance to investigate it much yet. Um, I will start trying to look into it um, soon. I was looking at... Um, I was looking at um, the storage thing recently as my as my battle, you know, because um, I like I I do this I I sort of like I choose a battle and then I, I you know I run with it. So like my next battle that I want to look at is that um, Arabic gamers in the Middle East across like the Emirates and, and Saudi Arabia and stuff. They are campaigning to get Starfield localized in arabic so i'm going to cover that again as part of my localization crusade which i've been you know crusading about localization for for years now um but yeah like the the next crusade that i'll go on is this dolby thing because i have had a load of messages about it and i will look into it and hopefully we can get an answer for you guys about what's going on so indeed indeed uh, he also says, uh, what are the chances of another Wolfenstein game? Must be time for third in the main series. I mean, we've talked about that quite a bit. We all thought it was going to happen at one point. Uh, like it was just like an unannounced game that was just waiting to be revealed and nothing. Uh, and then they got the announcement Machine Games was working on Indiana Jones. And it sort of seemed like what happened was maybe they were working on Wolfenstein 3. Even Pete Hines said that they were. And they got the... Indiana Jones deal and they just put Wolfenstein three on the back burner and you know, to, to, to do what to do Indiana Jones. So maybe we get a Wolfenstein three after Indiana Jones. At least that's my line of thinking at this point. Yeah. I think like there has to be a new Wolfenstein. Yeah. Like, the franchise is super good. Yeah. So uh cj he says hey gents my question this week is do either of you religiously collect microsoft reward points it has become a daily weekly ritual to do the sets currently for bing tasks i'm on 226 days straight and for the xbox quest i'm on a 54 week streak Mm -hmm. just wondering if either of you also did the tasks um jez do you do you do anything with um with uh bing the bing and the reward points and stuff I do, yeah. I I I use Bing as my default search engine, and on my phone and on my PC, and the points just rack up. And what I tend to spend them on, Rand, what? which will probably come as no surprise to you, is Overwatch points. Oh yeah, I guess so. You can you can convert Microsoft rewards directly into Overwatch points, and that's how I've been buying the Battle Pass. So like, if you use Bing, you don't have to. Overwatch is truly free to play. <laughs> you don't you don't even have to buy any of the microtransactions. So but you can convert the points into um charitable donations. You yes. can convert the points into vouchers for various stores. Microsoft Swe- stores. A lot of sweepstakes. sweepstakes. I use mine and, uh, Game Pass. I use mine to get uh Microsoft uh Xbox money. Uh I'll get enough and then I'll I'll cash out and get like a twenty five dollar gift card. But I don't yeah. do the searching on Bing, and I really don't also f- focus on the quests for Xbox, like uh, Game Pass stuff. If I get them, great. If I don't, whatever. Yeah, uh, I don't go hardcore on it. Just yeah. seriously, just use just use Bing, and then Bing's enough by itself. And like, 
I know, I know people laugh about Bing and saying, oh, Bing's not as good as Google, but for the for 99% of just regular searches, Bing will give you the same results as Google anyway. The only, the only times Bing really sucks is when you're trying to search for something very specific or something very local. Like, Bing's local search results are awful compared to Google. But that's it, basically. Like, if you search for general, general anything, like, it's just, it's fine, you know. And plus, it's got a nice picture every day. <laughs> <laughs> nice picture every day. Yeah, if you go to Bing.com, there's a, there's a new there's a new photograph there every day. It's pretty. Yeah. No, I, so like most of the time, my rewards, I just I get them for buying games, and then I just redeem them for points to buy more games. That's kind of what I do. Laser Wolf says, "I can't wait for a Starfield. What do you think the game would need to do to get a very high Metacritic score, ninety five or higher?" Hmm. What game is that? Starfield. What is it? What does it need to do to get a very high Metacritic score? I mean, be amazing, I guess. I think it needs it needs a lot of variety. It needs to have extremely satisfying combat. Um, you know, and I think it it really needs to have like it can't just be Fallout Four with a a space wrapper on it. It needs to it needs to sort of have a a next gen feel it needs to have a sort of like the way skyrim felt you know so much more advanced than oblivion in a lot of ways um but i think like what could really take it above 95 is having a general a genuinely emotionally evocative story i think like a lot of the a lot of the emotion that comes from skyrim is more like in the atmosphere and the environments, like, you know, stalking through a tomb as a stealthy archer and stuff like that. But the characters were always kind of wooden and the cutscenes, you know, that sort of, that classic Bethesda zooming in and every, the rest of the world freezes while you, you know, zoomed in on this character and the characters are very wooden animations and stuff like that. I think like that kind of stunts the delivery of um, the story, I think. But if I can like, improve upon that and the characters in in the cutscenes we've in the videos we've seen so far they look they do look like a step up to me um hopefully like the story will be more emotional as a result and more impressive yeah you 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 wanna you wanna be able to feel something that's your whole thing yeah i want to be able to feel emotions rand i want to be able to feel emotions because um usually i don't my 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 heart is dead I'm yeah i've got a question inside. here from silas jez good day mates i would love for you guys to discuss media bias especially in relation to playstation it seems as if the gaming media especially the big sites really treat sony with kid gloves i was wondering if they pander to the audience or is there some nefarious scheming going on do sites worry that if they speak negatively about sony they may get more restricted access to review codes preview events and such it just seems strange and why does Lion Ryan only speak with Chris Dring at GameIndustry.com? That also questions that site's obje- objectivity. Tired of the puff pieces they write about Sony, I've also noticed that they seem to do the same with Nintendo. For example, there's been outrage over the whole J.K. Rogget, J.K. Uh, Le- and Hogwarts Legacy stuff, but when the Saudis' PIF is growing their investment in Nintendo, it's not even a blip on the radar. Well, Jez, you've talked about about like this... Uh, review code stuff right well i'll i'll say now right um if if there is a conspiracy and if if the media is really actually afraid that sony will blacklist them for criticizing them i will say that i i am literally not blacklisted by sony you know and you know i i'm someone who people people consider to be sony's most arch nemesis for some reason i don't know um because i da- i dare criticize sony you know um but even i'm not blacklisted by sony and you know i speak to sony pr all the time especially since they're pushing on pc right and we're windows central we we um i reviewed i wrote days gone for windows central um, that code was provided by Sony. I reviewed Final Fantasy VII Remake, 
um, on PlayStation f- uh, Four Pro. So yeah, um, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think outlets are afraid of Sony blacklisting them, and I don't think they they want to suck up to Sony. I think the the fact of the matter is just just like in real life, most people prefer PlayStation. And that probably comes across in some of the, you know, thought processes of some of the writers, you know. Like I see I see things through the lens of, you know, being a fan of Microsoft and fan of Xbox, you know. I mean, I try I try I'm obviously critical of them. I wrote a critical article about the the storage stuff literally today. Um, you know, but I'll give Microsoft props where it's due, right? And I think I think that's human and normal you know we celebrate the good but we want better because at the end of the day the job isn't to market microsoft and xbox the job is to demand a better product because we're all consumers of microsoft stuff and they're a trillion dollar corporation and we're given the money so we deserve better we deserve dolby atmos to be fixed we deserve the game dvr to be better and all that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of lens that I come at it from. But it's different when you I suppose it's different when you're covering things multi-platform. Because like I only cover the Microsoft ecosystem because Windows Central is a Microsoft ecosystem magazine. You know, we don't cover anything but Microsoft stuff. So I don't really have to think about Sony. But if you are a multi-platform journalist and you're covering all the different platforms, I suppose it's a little bit harder to um, you know claim that you aren't in favor of one console if your coverage kind of seems to be reflect otherwise i don't know but yeah i mean i don't know about the I, review code situation uh i think also you know when you talk about media bias I, I think individual people have their own personal preferences and biases a lot of people re- like just really gravitate towards playstation like you said and I think that comes across uh, more so in their coverage. I also think a lot of sites will, I, mean, I don't know if pander is the right word, but obviously everything you do is going to be geared towards getting clicks. And I think PlayStation content does better than Xbox content simply because I think there's more PlayStation fans in general. So you'd focus on that more than Xbox related stuff. Like Xbox is, I'm not saying it's, like a niche, but it's definitely um, not as widespread as play. I mean, PlayStation has dominated the gaming industry for, for years now and generations. And I I think that's apparent in the coverage. Um, I mean, even look at the review situation, like uh, you look at Wolong dynasty or, or atomic heart games that had Xbox marketing because it was game pass. But you look at the, the, the platforms that it was reviewed on and it was something like, Wolong Dynasty was like 15 reviews on Xbox, but like 50 on PlayStation. It's just that for a lot of reviewers, a lot of websites, PlayStation is what they play on, and that's what they kind of gravitate towards. And that's the coverage they make. Um, I I don't know anything about review code situations. I mean, you always hear that like, oh, you know, maybe if you're IGN, you can say whatever, because Sony's not going to cut you off. But maybe if you're, you know... uh, a smaller channel or a smaller website and you really say something bad, maybe that they Sony could be like, ah, you know, we're not going to give you any stuff. I don't know really how that stuff plays out. And Jim Ryan speaking to Chris Dring at GameIndustry.com is because people really respect GameIndustry.com or GI Biz. It has a lot of penetration in the market. I don't think it's because Jim Ryan is like buddy Eat buddy. Penetration. You know what? Penetration. Penetration. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like, I think it's just, like, it's not so much that they're buddies. It's just, like, they have, you know, their website is read by a lot of people in the industry. Uh, and it's, like, they want to get their message across so they go to them. It'd be why, like, you know, Phil Spencer does interviews with IGN or, or what have you. They just kind of go where they feel their message is going to be heard the most or received well the most, you know? Um. Yeah, but thank you for the question, Silas. Uh, Mikey Rivers says, Jez, hear me out. After the ABK deal, we need a game that was meant just for Phil. Who are we picking to develop the StarCraft Vampire Survivors spinoff? <laughs> oh, man. I'll do it myself. I reckon I could make... I could, I could do that in Unity. I probably know just, just enough 
to make a vampire survivors rip off. I'd need someone else to do the the art though, I think. Yeah. Uh, Achievement says, with smaller publishers like Devolver, Nacon, and Paradox seeing Xbox as a must-have platform due to the possibility of Game Pass checks, do you think as Game Pass grows, we will see a similar approach taken from bigger publishers? And he asked this before Exoprimal was announced for Game Pass. I don't know. I, I sort of think bigger publishers are still going to avoid putting their, their premium games on, on Game Pass. I still think that's... I think Exoprimal is more of a situation where... Capcom's not too sure about that game. It seems like that maybe is the Outrider situation of 2023. They're like, all right, well, we'll just we'll 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 take the check from Xbox, and maybe Exo Primal can have a player base. Um, I I just don't really see a situation where the bigger ones are suddenly now going to, you know, start putting their stuff day one on Game Pass. I mean, I think they will as like back catalog things and six months one year later but not not day one andrew mcgregor says what do you think of ryan mccaffrey's thoughts that we will get starfield in september fours october and stalker 2 in november Ooh, i like that what do you think stalker oh. 2 november what about hellblade december what about starfield september fours october hellblade november stalker 2 december there you go yeah, yeah i think i think I think, I think i think that could work um, and then Starcraft 3 January. <laughs> you wish. Scruffy Man says, Hey, Rand and Jez, happy to be part of the XB2 crew. What would you say that each of your comforts, f- each of your comforts food and or drink are? It's hard to deny a good Coke Zero for me and a pepperoni pizza. Thanks. Well, um, <clears throat> I love pasta anything. Pasta? I just love pasta. Okay. Yeah, I just, pasta is my favorite food. Probably. I mean, pizza is pizza is my uh, comfort food. Lasagna, spaghetti, macaroni, macaroni. Penne, yeah, I love I love rigatoni, pizza. Tortellini. <laughs> I'm kind of I love pasta. I I, I kind of missing pizza right now. That's my comfort food. As for drink, milk. I mean, I I've been drinking Propel and I've been drinking that for a while now, and I love it. But like, there's just something nice Dude. about a nice, cold, refreshing Mountain Dew. Or Mountain Dew Code Mountain Red. Mm. What about that new drink from that guy? Oh, what's his name? Logan Paul. Yes. Prime or whatever it's called. Yeah. Have you tried? Have you tried that? I've not. No. That dude. Like it's a big problem in Britain. That drink. Is it? Because all the school, all the school kids are like, like breaking into grocery shops. And petrol stations, or gas stations, gas stations, to to steal the the prime drinks, bro, it's crazy. Is that is that happening in America? Is I that, mean, I haven't Britain heard anything Japan? about it. No. Yeah, it's people are going. Kids, the school kids are going crazy for it. Here. It's 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 wild, man. It's wild. But um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I really like milk. That's my that, favorite. Interesting. Comfort, I didn't. Comfort. I didn't think milk would be your answer, but okay. Elijah Vasquez says, "I got to ask both of you: which video game antagonist is your favorite of all time?" Hmm. Video hmm. game antagonist of all time, Jez. Who do you think? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I mean, Saren Mass Effect, like the combo of Saren and Sovereign. For Mass Effect One, um, I really like. The, I mean, there's a bunch of Warcraft antagonists I like. Oh, um, I knew it would be something Warcraft related. Gul'dan, Gul'dan's badass from Warcraft Three. Basically, all the Burnie Legion from Warcraft Three. I don't know. There's there's just tons, man. There's tons. I I like. Um, there's a lot from Metal Gear Solid that I like. Vamp, yeah, Vamp's example. good one. Um, basically, uh, the end. God, that battle was so good. Liquid Snake, Liquid Snake, yeah. Ocelot. Mm-hmm. Those, those are some uh, really H- good. Hideo ones. Kojima is great at antagonist. I love, I love in- antagonists. Like, I often find myself gravitating more towards antagonists than a good villain. A good villain is 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 needed. I mean, like. Far Cry yeah. Three, Vaz, sort of kind of Vaz made that game. Cool. Even Far Cry Five, um, 
the preacher, the the father or whatever. I thought he was he was really good. But like you know, even even for me, like when I was thinking, well, uh, all right, what about the classic one, Sephiroth? Sephiroth, yeah, yeah. Sephiroth, was, Sephiroth was cool, but I, I'm I'm not sure to this day what his actual goals were. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna crumb says, "Hey fellas, just wondering what your definition of the word soon for me. It is no longer than two weeks for Microsoft and Bethesda. It seems to be six months. So just curious <laughs> on what you guys think. I'm not salty about the delay. It already looks a whole lot better. So I know it's paying off. Yeah, these companies have a very different definition of the word soon, right? They said the Starcraft or Starcraft the Starfield Direct was coming soon, and it's coming in June, and that was announced in January." To me, six months or five months isn't soon. Soon is like a month at most. You know what I mean? But, I, you know, our what we think of soon is different than what they think. Uh, Kraken56 says, hey guys, Starfield looks awesome. My question is, what do you make of the Starfield Direct being attached to the Xbox Game Showcase? Is it a sign it will be a lighter E3 for Xbox's big games again? Perhaps it is a sign of confidence that they will have plenty of triple A's to show that they do not need Todd to be there on stage. I honestly don't know what to think about it. Love the show. Listen every week. Very interesting comment there because I've also been thinking of the same thing. My first thought was, oh, if it's after, are we going to get a smaller Xbox show? Right? Normally Xbox shows at E3 about an hour and a half, give or take. But if say you have a 30 minute uh, Starfield thing, does that mean the main show is only going to be an hour? You know, I, I, I did sort of think that. I hope that's not the case because I want them to go balls to the wall, the C3, right? So in my mind, it's more like they're going to go big at E3. They're going to do an hour and a half show, all this great stuff, and they're not even going to talk about Starfield because Starfield's going to have its own thing right after that's going to run for 30 minutes. And it's like two hours. We're going to be feasting. At least that's what I hope. So I don't necessarily think it's a sign. But it does make me wonder. Jez, do you, do you, what do you think? Uh, how long the Starfield show will be? No. Uh, is it is it a sign that the, the E3 show will be lighter because they're putting the Starfield direct on right after? So they're reduced hmm. the time. Maybe it's a sign that it'll be like longer like, like, like there's so much that they Starfield couldn't fit it in. in yeah i mean this might be wishful thinking i guess yeah possibly it could go either way it could be that like that it's going to be shorter because starfield's going to take up so much of it but maybe it's because like they really wanted to show off starfield in depth without compromising all the other stuff they had planned but I don't know. Could go either way. Yeah. Uh, Not Skywalker says last write in as a result of listening to Starfield talk right now. How about that background footage? Are you all now more optimistic we will get 60 FPS on Series X? I saw them playing the game on Xbox Dev Kits in the video, and boy, did things look smoother at a glance. Cheers. I mean, I hope so. I hope we have a performance mode. It'd be great if one of the reasons they delayed it was to, you know, in- including polishing the game, but also providing a performance mode. Um, you know, I guess I'm, I I guess I'm more optimistic now that it might have a performance mode because before I was like, ah, it'll be 30, but yeah, some of the stuff we saw did seem pretty smooth. So we'll, we'll we'll have to wait and see, uh, Byqua from in 14 says happy Friday. I just saw a clip of Colin Moriarty talking about Xbox and how we haven't seen anything come out from Xbox studios. He said, if it wasn't for Bethesda, Xbox would have anything. And if he was an Xbox fan, he would be really worried. Also noting that Insomniac will have released three Spider-Man games for any of the studios they acquired in 2018. Kind of agree and disagree. I was wondering what your guys' take was. Anyways, thanks for all the content you guys provide week after week. I mean, I think me and Jez have talked about that. About, like, we literally have said, man, it would look really, really sparse without Bethesda, wouldn't it? Yeah, I like, mean, there's, there's, there's no doubt about it. Xbox Game Studios is not delivering yet, you know. Um, Matt Booty's, you know, all the stuff that Matt... Un, under Matt Booty, like, we haven't seen anything 
really. We have we've seen a bunch of CGI, and that's it. And if it wasn't, if it was, Colin's right. You know, frankly, if if it wasn't for Bethesda, Xbox would be in a much worse position right now. But that's why they bought Bethesda. You know, it's it's like it's like it's not a gotcha to say that. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's not a gotcha to say, oh well, if, if it wasn't for Bethesda, but it's it's like, yeah, that's. That's why they bought Bethesda. <laughs> you know, they knew they needed stuff. And that kind of shows the commitment they had. Like Xbox fans were saying, give us games. Microsoft was like, okay, well, we're going to buy these studios that we think we can grow from double A to triple A. That'll take time. In the interim, let's buy some triple A studios that are already ready. Uh, Bethesda, let's buy Bethesda. So to me, that shows commitment. That doesn't make me worried because I'm an Xbox fan. And I don't have to like, uh, and like as an Xbox fan, to me, that shows that Microsoft is committed. It doesn't make me worried. It makes me the opposite of worried that Microsoft identified a problem and then offset it by buying Bethesda. You know, the only thing that I would say is that I'm disappointed in the sort of the way that Xbox Game Studios has been handled, you know. Well, someone, um, Brandon says... With, re- with regards to the games that I'm interested in, because let's not pretend that Xbox Game Studios has delivered nothing because we've we've had really good Forza games n- almost non-stop. We've had, like, the Coalition's delivered a lot of quality games. We've had stuff like Flight Simulator and World's Edge has, deliv- has revived Age of Empires, you know, credibly, which is incredibly hard to do. Let's not downplay that stuff. But a lot of the games that I am interested in, like State of Decay 3, we haven't seen anything from that. Um, you know, and we haven't seen anything from Compulsion. Well, yeah, it's more. it seems to be more of like the acquired studios from 2018 because he mentions Insomniac and it's like they acquired those studios. A lot of them had projects that they were still working on before they could fully transition. Microsoft was honoring their contracts and stuff. Uh, they ran. But, in- but this is the thing, right? This is the thing. The studios they acquired were double A studios. Like in Exile, Wasteland Three is is kind of like a double A game, kind of. And then like State of Decay Two, very double A kind of game. Microsoft wants to get them to triple A level. Some of these studios have had like entire new buildings constructed to accommodate their growth. They've moved from being indie teams to being multi-team studios in the case of stuff like undead labs they've now got staff all over america you know and they're set up for complete remote working and in the case of ninja theory they've had an entire new studio built by microsoft to accommodate their transition to triple a so yeah it's been slow as a fan it's disappointing how long it's taken and covid has no doubt exacerbated that but at the same time, it's like, it's not a gotcha that Bethesda's the one that's been doing some of the heavy lifting. It's part of the strategy, you know. Indeed. So, yeah, I I mean, I get what he's saying, but at the same time, it's like, I see it from the other, I see it from the other direction. I'm not worried. I'm encouraged by it, you know, so. Yeah. Uh... And also, my backlog's endless. I'm yeah. not. I'm not sitting here thinking like, "Oh God, what have I got to play right now?" You know, I, I'm. I'm thinking, "God, I got too much shit to play, man." It like games. For me, the amount of games coming out isn't about like. It's not a. Sco- it's not. A, it's not a football game. It's not a scoreboard. You know, it's like, oh, Sony released this many games. That they hit this this score on Metacritic. I don't give a fuck. I got more games that I can physically play. I don't care if they're multi-platform or not. I put Halo on PlayStation for all I give a shit. I don't care, you know. Personally speaking, it's not it's not a it's not a sport to me. Console war is just completely irrelevant to me, you know. Is Microsoft running a healthy business? Yes, it is. Am I am I purchases safe? Yes, they are. the 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 rest of it is just drama and talking points. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, Blake Toven with the question just wanted to mention how much it bothers me when people think that when Microsoft says it would not have the incentive to cease or limit making ZeniMax games available for purchase on rival consoles it means anything other than they won't pull titles from Sony's store that are already released published and available to purchase 
Microsoft was in te- intentionally ambiguous in their speech, and I can't help but feel like people either lack reading comprehension or are being intentionally obtuse. Yeah. I mean, even Sony said they didn't break, Microsoft didn't break any sort of uh, agreements with the thing with ZeniMax. So that's all you need to know because Sony would say anything to block the deal. And they're like, oh, they didn't technically make break any promises. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Omen says, Happy Friday. I was recently thinking about the whole Series S holding <clears throat> back games discussion. And to me, it seems like some of the devs simply did not anticipate the Series S skew during development. That said... I was wondering if there's more innocent reason for developers to not have a Series S version ready. Do we know if developers were left in the dark about the Series S skew prior to the public reveal of it? I could just imagine devs hearing of the specs of the PS5 and Series X well ahead of time and then being blindsided by the Series S announcement and then being forced to adjust their game after they've already set their minimum spec to the Xbox PS5 level. I mean... I, that maybe that's possible for some of the launch games or something. But I mean, also uh, every one of these games that we've been playing for the last few years of all cross gen and cross, you know, yeah. PS4 and Xbox one, all are lower spec than the series S. So I don't know if, it re- I don't know if it had any impact on that because everybody was doing cross gen stuff. And by now everybody knows about it. They know the requirements. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think scaling technology is getting better too. I mean, you can go and look at the Resident Evil Resident Evil 4 remake demo, and there's a lot of there's a lot of gameplay, uh, there's a lot of graphics tweaks you can do. Like you can run you can run ray tracing while in performance mode, or turn it off, or have it in um, you know quality mode. You know. A, a, Devs are increasingly like looking at letting people tailor their experience on the console, and being like, "Yeah, well, you know, you you can you can run it at sixty frames in performance mode, but you can you know sacrifice maybe fifteen frames to include ray tracing if you fancy doing it." Um, you know, and um, I think as we get further into the gen, the tools will improve and optimizations will be made on the box and and um, and that kind of stuff. And we'll see games scale better than they have done historically, but yeah, it's just and... it's like it takes time. Like if you look at, if you look at a game that because the Xbox 360 architecture barely changed from like the Xbox 360 arcade all the way through to the Xbox 360s or whatever they called it, it changed a little bit, but not not in huge amounts. And um, the 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 delta in game quality from when the 360 launched to, to the end of the gen is like massive. Like if you look at a game like Dead Rising One, and then like go and look at Halo Four, it's like it's it's orders of magnitude. It's like night and day difference, and that's how it used to be. You know, across the gen, things just gradually improved, and it was the same with the Xbox One. It'd be the same with the Series X and S, but yeah, just shit takes time. Uh, Parker Petrov basically wrote a novel. <laughs> So, oh dear. He says, My question is simple. Why do fans, detractors, and the media <laughs> have a, a double standard with Xbox? The Starfield release date once again brought up everyone discussing how Xbox manages their gaming portfolio, as you have large contingent of people who are saying Xbox told us 12 months and they lied to us. However, to me, it seems like just another example of fans and in some cases the media moving the goalposts. As let's take Top Gun Maverick, for example. That was delayed two years. It was done. It was promised to us and then they delayed it. It didn't, for the most part, have people screaming they were lied to. We were promised this movie, and now we have to wait. Movies get announced, the dates push back and change all the time. Never once do we have the outlets and people saying they were lied to. God of War was announced basically Mm. as a PS5 launch title and delayed. No one said anything about Horizon Forbidden West being delayed. Gran Turismo 5 or 7 delayed, nothing said. You don't have mobs of people in videos saying it was promised this game this year or this date for any of those titles, and those are just recent examples. I have hundreds more examples I could list. Other forms of media such as books, TVs, movies, and other game companies and Sony and Nintendo do not have to deal with this. Yet Xbox delays games and it's we're lied to. They can't make a game. They can't manage teams. Heads need to roll. Fire these people as they don't know what they're doing. Halo comes out and they didn't have a plan. They should be fired, as commonly said. We get to 2023. Microsoft fires a large part of the Halo team. And now it's how could Xbox do this? How could they gut the Halo team like this. They clearly have management issues at the top of Xbox. When six months ago, that was what the media fans and detractors asked for. 
Now we have people going through the last Xbox E3 show, like Phil Spencer is Moses coming down from the mountain with a stone tablet etched in the blood of God delivering <laughs> binding agreements on when games will wow. release. Wow. When the intent was everything in this show is targeted to come out before the next E3 showcase. Just that it is our honest intent based on where we're at today. As if we don't say something when media fans, detractors will just talk insensibly about how we have no games. As the media fans, detractors also say you don't need to crunch to get us games. You don't need to skip the holidays and family events. We are willing to wait. But then when they actually have to wait, it's what's taking so long. Are you inept or can you not just build a game? It's been three years. Why have we heard nothing? While also ignoring reports from people like Jason Schreier who say an average game development time is now six years and it hasn't even been six years since Microsoft bought all these studios. But let's not let facts and information cloud judgment on how horrible Microsoft and Xbox are. There you go. Man. Like a novel, like I said. Yeah, I mean, this, I appreciate the passion, you know. But, I mean, he's right in a way. I mean, that there does, you can like, you can sort of, you can extrapolate some kind of double standard sometimes, right? But I think like, it, it's kind of, you have to be, you have to be careful when comparing one set of opinions to another you know is it is it the same people who are saying like you know crunch is bad um and then like complaining about a game delay is it the same people though you know um maybe it is i don't know if it is you know there's definitely there's there's definitely like um examples you can look at a tim doc on twitter is really good at exposing people who have said one thing but then a few months ago they said something else and then you know exposes yeah. them as hip hypocrites or inconsistent you know but i don't often see that in the media i mean obviously you see that a lot from you see that a lot from twitter people but i don't know I'd have to do a thorough analysis of what different specific journalists are saying. But in my in my estimate, journalists try very hard to be consistent because they know that everyone's reading their shit and everyone's looking at them. I know I do. I try to stay as consistent as possible because I know everyone's going over going over things with a magnifying glass, you know. And I know other journalists feel the same way as well. Because you kind of erode your authority if you like, you know, you back backtrack on a take or you're not clear about something. I don't know. I mean, but, yeah. there. I, I guess this goes. To, I mean, you can you could say like maybe there's a double standard. I mean, people were ups. I mean, I don't know if they were upset, but God of War, the 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 Horizon, the the, the Gran Turismo delays you know, versus the Xbox stuff. I think this is a common sentiment that PlayStation's delivered and people feel that regardless of the delays, PlayStation is going to deliver the goods. Whereas I, I feel like most people feel Xbox hasn't hit that yet. So they're just kind of worried like, Oh, something must be wrong. But it's kind of what I, what I, what I talked about. Like I mentioned the narrative, like you say, Hey, we want these games coming in the next 12 months and then they don't hit. And then it's becomes this, Oh my God, something must be wrong at Xbox thing. And like that only happened because they unilaterally said these games are coming, you know, uh, if they didn't say that, then there wouldn't be all this talk about it. Xbox is just looked at differently, Parker. That's all I'll say. They're looked at differently from Nintendo and PlayStation. It's just a perception thing. And Xbox they're you know, they're not on that same level as the other two. I think Xbox needs to work harder at, at gathering goodwill from people than the other two do. I think that's just very apparent. Is that right? No, but that's just this is the situation they're in, and that's really all there all there is to it. Um, but thank you for all the questions at Patreon. dot com. You can submit yours. Uh, so, if you go sign up, yeah, that's that's all of them. Uh, we do have a couple super chats though to get to before. Are you we... sure? Did you not click show more? No, I mean, what do you mean? Are we sure? There was like nineteen of them. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, you got all nineteen. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I just want to make sure because sometimes we miss them. No, we got them all. We got them all. Uh, we have one here, a super chat from Diver Digital who says, I've never been here live, but I listen every week on Spotify. Ooh, that's that's awesome. What's going on, man? He says, I just wanted to say thanks for providing my favorite pod every week. Jez and Rand are incredible. Thanks for the entertainment from Seattle. Thank you for listening. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Leonardo says, happy Mario Mar 10 day, everyone. March 10th. Uh, Austin Seller says, at the end of the day, I play an Xbox Series X, PS5, PC, and Switch. I just love gaming. want the best experience for everyone, regardless of where they play. Adam F says, honestly, love you guys in the show. Thank you. He says, leave a like. You f- leave a like y'all for these two fantastic fellows also hello from arkansas skull hello there hello from chicago illinois uh thank you adam for the super chat uh aramaic says uh what smaller games are you still looking forward to this year in game pass i chronicles 100 heroes replaced and benedict fox for me for me it's benedict fox and replaced for sure i'm really looking forward to those two um, and Mr. Two Opinionated says, look at PlayStation's 2023 without Square. Same energy as Bethesda and Xbox. You got a point. You got a point. If it wasn't for Square, 2023 for PlayStation would just be Spider-Man 2. But I would imagine, I think a lot of PlayStation fans would probably be okay with that because, you know, they'd be like, you know, Spider-Man 2 is going to be, be really good. But, yeah. you know, um, yeah. I mean, pfft. Sort of, sort of is what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean that it, it is interesting because Mister Two Opinion. Because when you think about it, if the Sony's games last year didn't get delayed, and say let's say they all came out in twenty twenty one like they were supposed to, then PlayStation would have only had Last of Us remake, and then Spider Man Two the following year. They basically would have had a two years where they didn't have any content, for the most part. Uh, you know, because game development's tough and things take a while. Um, and, and yeah. you know, it's just how it is. And, you know, um, yeah. I mean, when you think, yeah, when you it's put tough it. There, man. It's tough out there. It is. It is. It is very tough. Um, I, I saw someone on LinkedIn saying that it's harder than it's ever been to put a game out. The cost of user acquisition has become absolutely astronomical because of mobile and stuff like that yeah, you have- and like you 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 basically need to create artificial trends to for games to get picked up these days and to do that artificially costs an astronomical amount of money yeah i mean you know. so many games competing for your time but not just games movies yeah. entertainment books everything's just competing for your time and money but uh, yeah, we're almost at four hours. I feel like this is the time to end the show. Uh, we'll be back next week, March 17th, for a- another episode of the Xbox 2. Shout out to Boom in the chat who just showed up. Hope you're doing well, brother. Um, if you guys, do us a big favor before we get out of here. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. And yeah, I hope you guys have an incredible weekend. Oh, we did have one more question from Ryan Kipple. I did miss this because I kind of answered. He says, how are your diets going lately? All the best to you guys. Mine's going really good. I think Jez, Jez is, isn't, though. I think yeah, mine sucks. Yeah, I've Jez gained hasn't, uh... since the summer. Yeah. Um, I'm, still, I'm still down, like, a good amount from where I was. But, yeah, I need to get back on that shit. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So we will see you next week. Hope you all have an incredible weekend and who knows what's going to happen this week. Uh, maybe something crazy. Uh, Cause something's always going on in the video game industry, but until then Indeed. this is the Xbox two. I'm Randall Thor 19 for just Corden. Love you guys. Keep it gaming later. Later.